for your presence in this place. Are you praying? Lift your voice. Pray in the spirit. Just focus on Jesus tonight. Even as you pray. Pray everywhere, inside, outside, pray online. Bless him in the spirit, speak in other tongues. Shitebaladabaladakatus, <laughs> Emprakata parata balada ba, pray in the spirit. Shimana sada balakata pradege de belade boko sobrende ke telekata. Shala barada ba kaprosa de balada barunda sada balakata pradege diash. Kapara kata barende ke tevele ke toko sodo bra. Shekete parasa de balakata mbrada kata balakatush. Lekete pretes sabarada balada ba kata pradege de belade katush shala Rakata baba baba, imprete kaparuta shabra diga daba la daba. Haru sababa shana malakata prendege de bala dabos. Shite bala daba la daba kata prendege de bala dabos. Embra kata bara kata paruta sada prendege de bala daba karya ta kata prende sada bakash. Shekete kete 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 shekete kete 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 para kata bara ta kotos. Separando sata barakata parianda kata fredegedes Imbra kata barakata fredegete balakata fredeges kapadash Lakata parus kamadada shanda lakata fredegete balakata Make sure you are praying the spirit is always willing The spirit is always willing Shana balada balada bakush Helanda reka sabarada balada balada bakush Shela barakata balada 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 bakush. Shela barada balada balakatos. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are still going to pray, and I like you to pray from the depth of your heart. Father, everything that will cover my hearing and my seeing tonight, I tear it off my life. Lift your voice and pray. Please lift your voice. Pray seriously. Pray seriously. Every flesh that will cover my eyes and cover my ears tonight, I reject it. Are you praying? I'm in a season where I must rise in the spirit, I must rise in destiny. I put pressure on myself for the sake of my destiny. 
Is someone praying for the sake of your destiny? Is someone praying for the sake of your generation? Shikapakato sabranda kaparus kabariata. Embragata parakato shadekate lekate prakata lakata. Give yourself wholly to them. Give yourself wholly to them. That thy profiting may appear unto all. That thy profiting may appear. Shalamalakata brandas katabalikata. Enderekatalika protosubatalakata. I put myself under pressure tonight for the sake of my destiny, for the sake of superior levels in the spirit. Pray. Shikatabalakata. Ears you must open, you must hear, eyes you must see. In the name of Jesus Christ. Keep praying, don't stop. Don't look around. Pray, focus on Jesus and pray. Tabarus kamalakata prashke de belekata. Embrakata takata bakata rekete kete. Rekete kalata parus asianakata. Mam prekete katola kaprins kalibarando shalakatos. Tonight my eyes see and my ears hear. Affect my life, breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life. Breathe on me. Change my life. Breathe on me. Lift my life. Breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Change my life. Breathe on me. Heal my life. Breathe on me. Restore my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Lift my life, breathe on me. Bless my life, breathe on me. Change my life, breathe on me. 
Salabarande salakata brahaska de belaku. In the lekete bransa sasiata kata bradaga de balada katu. Pray, it's part of the meeting. Salabarakata bradaga de gade bakata. Salabarakatu. Change my life. Change my life. Change my life. Let this not be another meeting. Change my life, oh God. Change my life. Change my life. Change my life. Pray for your life, not your finances, not your ministry, not your business. Focus on your life. Change my life. Change my life. Tonight is about me, it's about my life. Leave your challenges. If you are not there, your challenges will not be there. Pray for yourself. This is about my life. Change my life. Change my life. Shalabarakata paratus. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen to me, please. Please listen. Many times we focus on the things we want changed not knowing that the troubles came because you were there no dead man has trouble no dead man needs finances no dead man needs breakthrough no dead man needs speed delay comes because you are there speed is needed because you are there everything is required because you are there we focus on everything we want change and forget about ourselves one of the primary assignments of prayer, listen, is not to petition God to meet needs. It's not even an instrument of warfare to ward off the power of darkness. It's not just a spiritual system of legislature. One of the major assignments of prayer, and this is where many believers continue to miss it, Prayer was originally designed to change you. Let me show you a scripture. Luke chapter, keep standing. Luke chapter 9. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, please. Be sensitive tonight. Luke chapter 9. From verse 29. Everybody read. One, two, read. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white glistening. He prayed and nothing around him changed. It was him that changed. When he prayed, his countenance changed, his raiment changed. You can change yourself in prayer. Did you hear what I said? You can change like, a, how many of you have seen a snake molting? Is a system by which they grow, they expand, they come out of their former self into a new self. So when you see that snake, the, 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 the former self, the, the shell of it that is left, is the former one. You can pray yourself into a newer version of yourself. You can pray yourself into a wiser version of yourself. You can, let me tell you this, prayer is not the only key. But whenever prayer is not the key, it becomes the hand that holds the key. If prayer is not the key, then it is the hand that holds the key to the door. Everything plus prayer increases you. Knowledge plus prayer increases you. Grace plus prayer increases you. Are we together? And as he prayed, it didn't say his situation changed. No. It didn't say as he prayed. Those, there were times that he prayed 
and people from a distance were blessed but this time around as he prayed he was the one changing we're going to see pray a few minutes this prayer is not for my father this prayer is not for my bank account this prayer is not oh god take darkness out of my life this prayer is change me this is not the best version of me this is not the best it's, it's like an it's like an incubation room bring something out of my prayer life oh god that is not what went in is someone praying lift your voice pray you are praying to be changed you are not praying for things to change you are praying to be changed Prende ke paruta salabata rata tosa dagadi. Salabrandi garika tosi. Prada kala prata tosa gede belakata. Shaka paruka te prende ke te balakata. Fix your eyes on Jesus and pray. They looked unto Him, and their faces were lighted. Abro shabaraka tosa lekata prende ke te ke lekata. Do not say I'm tired. Do not say I'm weak. That's a lie of the devil. Do not say I can't pray. You pray for your destiny by praying for yourself. You change things by changing. Take this weak version of myself to a strong version, oh God. Take this weak version of myself, this weak version of a man of God, this weak version of a woman, this weak version of an entrepreneur, this weak version of a career person. Let it be replaced by a strong one. There is power in prayer. Pray yourself to strength. Pray your way to authority. Pray your way to power in the spirit. Pray your way to strength. But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong. Pray your way to faith. Shekete bro samara katari katos Embra kato teke leke teke leke teke teke leke ta Shabran dos kamara kato sekete leke ta thy profiting may appear unto all that thy profiting may appear unto all that thy profiting may appear unto all your profiting will never 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 appear unto all by default you must pray your way to results pray your way to real power pray your way to strength pray your way to real anointing Pray out weakness from your life. Pray out fear from your life.
pray your way out of lukewarmness pray your way out of doubt and unbelief listen listen to me listen to me greatness is what you attract to your life by reason of what you are becoming more than by reason of what you have your results 
are a reflection of the transitions happening in your life or otherwise. It is cheaper to change yourself than to change things. Because when you change, things must change. Everything in your life is a statement to your destiny. This is where you are in the spirit. This is where you are in knowledge. This is where you are in destiny. Instead of shifting things one by one, shift yourself and everything will rise to follow you. You truly change things by changing. You don't change things. It's harder to change things one by one. Everything you draw to your life is a reflection of what version of you. When you change, your results change. When you change, even the operation of the spirit over your life changes. He does not relate with everybody the same way at every dimension. No. Hallelujah. It's important we pray. The biblical way to deal with weakness is to pray. You pray out a weak version of yourself. If you fail in the day of battle, he say your strength is small. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. God bless you. Be seated and be sensitive. Please play the strings for me. Mighty God, give you praise. Good evening, everybody. It's my goal and my prayer and my desire that every service becomes an experience for someone's life, an experience for someone's destiny. We've been doing this for many years, but we will never take for granted the opportunity that God gives for our growth and our transition every service is prepared intentionally not only to bless not just to honor the continuity of a ministry's program but it's an opportunity for the holy spirit to come once again and to change our lives and among the things we must rebuke is familiarity you must rebuke familiarity i know how god works I know how God moves. I know somebody is about to shout. I know somebody will roll as usual. This is what you expect in Koinonia. That familiarity will turn you from a partaker to a spectator. You can be in a place, be a witness, a spectator, and not a partaker. It takes more than just looking around to be a partaker. It takes a heart connection, an awareness that one moment in God's presence, effectively maximized, can turn a man's life around. People say one word from God can change a man. No. One word from God does not change a man. One word from God received, understood, and engaged is what will change a man one word from God to change a man is deception the devil has never been afraid of the word of God when the sower sowed it was Satan himself that came and carried the seed one word received with meekness the Bible says the engrafted word praise the Lord I came tonight with a very serious burden um, and many times when the Lord wants you to teach teachings that are very very seasonal and very called for especially as the times demand he will bring them not as sermons he will bring them as burdens it will be a strong burden upon your spirit that will refuse to leave praise the Lord and um, I've been focusing a lot 
especially about what i just talked about the power of changing things by changing the power of growing to superior realms of results by being the one to grow i think that sometimes we pay so much attention on the things around us we desire changed that we forget that those things are there because of us that means that if i refuse to transit in life no matter what i try to move it will come down back to my level are we together now there are many things you would not need to pray for if you pray for yourself let me repeat there are many things you would not need to pray for if you pray on and for yourself that means if you become the project of the growth there are many things you may not need to pray for again it's true in praying for yourself you will find out that you are praying for many other things your prayer life and indeed your destiny will be hard if you focus on any other thing outside yourself pay attention to yourself the development your transition and then you will find out that in doing so you are automatically influencing every result you desire let me repeat what i said earlier on while we're praying that greatness and success is what you attract to yourself not what you pursue what you attract to yourself by reason of who you are becoming if i'm still the person yesterday today then i do not deserve to get any result different from that which i had yesterday the results you seek cannot come to this version of you they are to come but not this version of you the anointing that you seek cannot come upon this version of you the prosperity you seek cannot enter into the pocket of this version of you so many times the power of restraint is not always demonic it is god waiting for the version of you that matches that result please listen and learn and grow this is spiritual intelligence not every restraint is an attack from satan not every restraint is proof that there is something demonic many times it can be god waiting for the version of you that is fit it is not because god cannot take the members from hundred to ten thousand it is not because god cannot take your finances from 500 to 10 million it is not because god cannot take your grace from this level to that level but it cannot come on this version of you the bible says you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin they are all called wine skins the difference is old and new you are still called a human being but the difference is the old version and the new version you are still called a man of god but the man of god before and the new man of god ah jesus said why seekest ye the dead among the living there was a version of me that lied lifeless you saw that version on the ground but it's no longer in the grave a version of me has arisen in the glory of the father not the one that walked the earth now without blood a version of me that lives by another life i learned this in my life and as a person i stopped wasting my time to change things it is hard to change things do you know how many things in your life you have to change if you pursue them one by one Think how hard it is to look for good friends. Think how hard it is to look for quality connections and relationships. Think how hard it is to look for information. Every level already has the systems and the provisions waiting. The cheapest way. Listen, it is harder for me to try to reach to something higher than me to bring it down to my level it is wiser to grow to that level where it no longer becomes difficult remember if you watch a child growing up like one of these are little ones they try to reach for something and you see the difficulty they can fall many times 
it is cheaper. Sometimes they can try and stand upon something that can throw them and then pick what they want. But an adult who has grown just comes and he can look from that height and without pressure pick. The things that are hard today are not hard. It is your level that defines them so. If you grow, you will find out that they are not so. The finances that looks like a monster of a realm. Lord, when will I go out of this? It's only the old version of you is looking at the destiny that only the new version of you can enter. So it looks hard. Spiritually, Lord, is it possible that I can step into this? How will I start seeing visions? What does it look like to see a vision? Will I be in myself? Will I fall down? Is it that I'm dying? Those are unnecessary questions. Just grow. When you grow and enter those realms by experience, you will have those answers. There are many things about your biological life you did not need to ask. It's a burden to ask every question. What happens to me when I'm a teenager? What happens when I'm 13? Give me a detailed information of what will happen when I'm 14 years. It's unnecessary. Just grow. As you grow many times, you will find out that you didn't even consciously pay attention to those transitions. Let me ask you a question. Do you know where your clothes of 10 years were? Do you know where they are now? Can you remember giving them out? No. Can you remember burning them up? No. Can you remember packing them to keep somewhere? No. They left for these ones to come. It's a mystery you don't understand. Remember where your first phone is? Remember you didn't throw it. Remember you didn't sell it. Remember you didn't sew it. But where is it? Many times we don't know the things around us are living things too. They are governed by laws. They live quietly and we do not know. May the Lord give us understanding. That the things that we call dead are not dead. They can hear and they can see. They are more obedient to the systems of God than us. Are we together? I never had to tell anybody, stop giving me this kind of honorarium. Stop tearing 2A and rolling 500 naira inside and chucking it in my pocket as a bribe. That would be stupid and arrogant. The key is to grow. When you grow, a law prohibits individuals from approaching you that way. Are we together? So many times when you look at the things around you and you don't like them, they were not designed to live. They were designed to be the reality of anybody in that realm. If you don't like them, move to the realm where there are realities that match your desire. Please listen to me. This will give us intelligence. There are many prayers we pray that are, it's just the mercy of God that answers them. They are not wise prayers. They are prayers that are a reflection of spiritual ignorance. Many times the prayer is not take this away from me. Many times the prayer is take me out of this realm. The realities are fixed. They are there. An heir, as long as he's a child, he says, differeth not from a slave, though he be lord of all. He says, but he's under tutors and governors. That means that when you find out there are tutors and governors around, the issue is not to drive them away. The issue is to grow out of childhood and you may not need them again. Praise the Lord. Yes. Another analogy, and then I'll begin to teach on what I have tonight. There are many primary schools, I believe they still do it, where the junior students in that primary school wear short trousers. Is that correct? And then when they get to a particular level, they start to wear long trousers. Now imagine someone in, say, primary two, goes to the teacher and say, look, I'm tall. It's something that came genetically. And because of that, it may not look good on me to wear a short trouser. The rules will not change because of you. But when you change, you change the rules. 
you don't change the rules by changing the rules you change the rules by leaving the realm where those rules apply all rules don't apply the same at every level it is true are we together so we seek to transit by the spirit to realms where certain things no longer hold listen to me look up please look up you're writing but look up if you do not pay attention to what i'm saying this is what will happen to you everybody speaks from the reality that his transition has captured so many times when you hear people speak you will interpret their speakings from your realm and based on your realm it looks untrue with all humility if in 24 hours nobody favors me is proof something is wrong at this level you see that yes the level god has brought me makes it is either an attack or something about my life 24 hours cannot happen without someone favoring me this is the reality at this level are we together now yes once upon a time if i'm not favored in a year i'll have to be patient for one year to know whether it's an attack or not at the end of that year i say no this year it, it, it was not like that and then you pray and then you rise to a realm where it becomes a month you rise to a realm where it becomes a week if nobody calls my phone in 24 hours seeking for help something is wrong i will go for a retreat 24 hours i wake up every day without fail with text messages of people needing the grace of god upon my life once upon a time i think something happened to my phone and there was no network i got up in the morning and flipped my phone and it was empty i said this is something is wrong something has to be wrong in five hours my phone did not ring nobody sent a text something is wrong i off the phone and put it back and there the text i said this is it because that result did not look like my realm now listen please listen to what i'm teaching you there are levels where if you pray for one hour you must punish yourself hello this is not religion you truly must punish yourself because the demand on your life the daily servicing of your altar one hour is too small if you don't meet that target you must punish yourself by an extended prayer time someday why because before you finish thanking god for what he has done the time should have gone what god has done is to before you start listening and say lord let me name my blessings thank you because the other day they didn't kill my member somewhere thank you oh god because the wicked did not get a reason to laugh one hour is already covered there are people who don't have much to say thank you for thank you lord because i'm alive thank you because even though my father is alive oh, lord here are my needs but there are things god has done to you in some realms it is wicked to use 10 minutes to say thank you now the time someone is interceding is your thanksgiving time you use that one hour to roll on the ground and say thank you sometimes you use 15 minutes to just keep quiet and let your tears say thank you before you start talking that's why i'm telling you praying for one hour in certain realms is not talking in tongues for one hour there are activities in some realms that is only intercession and warfare what and what intercession and warfare because of the seriousness of where you are but there are realms that god has given you some level of victory intercession will be after a prolonged period of cry and thanksgiving So two people go to pray. Come, show. Two people go to pray. They represent different realms. One person enters and says, Father, I give you thanks. You are the lion of the tribe of Judah. This is the day or the night, whatever time of the day that the Lord has made. I rejoice. I give thanks. Shut up. And straight you go into, Lord, these are my petitions. Help me. Oh, this is plenty. The list is increasing. Lord, help me. At a point you start praying, you start lamenting. You are right at that realm. You will find out that the person you went to pray with you will think he cannot pray this is what you'll be doing 
Thank you, Jesus. Father, I glorify you. He's praying, oh. You are merciful. You are merciful. You are merciful. And a song is playing. Lord, you are merciful. And you are there praying and getting angry. I say, hey, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. You are not at the same realm. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. Listen. That person is taking out time. Later on, you are exhausted. You are thirsty. You are tired. You don't even know you have been praying and miss all around. He knows you are praying and miss. He's not correcting you because there is a provision of God's mercy that whoever is at that realm, God should ignore his mistakes and answer him. So you find out that you are praying a lot of nonsense at that realm and you receive supernatural answers. They are not a proof that you are correct. The person standing here already knows. You didn't enter his gates with thanksgiving. You didn't even get to his court. You are shouting around the gate. But God came out and helped you. That is not how he helps men. He just came to help you. Now watch this. This is, if you understand, you will now get what I'm telling you. That your prayer life, imagine that two of you come. You, you truly, with, without, without a sense of pride, two of you cannot be prayer partners. It's not like you can pray together, but you can't be prayer partners. You can only be prayer partners corporately and to round up, maybe belong to the same group. Because this guy is already, he brings out his piece of paper and there's nothing to bring out. You tell him, all right, pray. And you lie down flat only to stand up after two hours. You are not sleeping, no. It's part of the prayer time. And the guy says, God, bros, I'm tired. I'll finish. I need to go. I'll come back later. And he says, okay, God bless you. There are certain realms where you cannot pray with people. There are things God will do and tell you that requires you alone with him. So when people are there, he will relate with you in a way and manner that is general. And you have to remain behind because you know you and God have not talked yet. People are there and you are praying generally. Oh Lord, thank you for everything. Okay, may God bless you, sir. We are going to sleep and you tell them go. And then immediately you go. The atmosphere changes. The Holy Spirit now comes as one adorned for that realm. There are ways he cannot relate. The, the weirdness of his operation at that realm cannot be understood by people. Because sometimes as soon as he comes there, you will do things that don't make sense. You will walk alone and fall down and that's it you are in a vision and for the next 30 minutes you are there do you think that person will leave you alone he will wake you and shift you till your spirit cannot return back to your body again so he will allow them go you don't covet a man's prayer dimension by saying let that dimension come and meet me no you don't have enough testimonies to pray that kind of prayer. You've not gone through enough pain to know what a man will be doing for three hours. Everything in your life is paid for by everybody. You don't know what it means to be attacked. What commission have you been given? What assignment? What, what is the devil going to attack you for? It's just general attacks here and there just to bring down your spiritual life. Nothing serious. So you can stroll around for 10 minutes and go. But there are certain burdens that when, when they are on your head. The time it takes me to pray for one department alone in Koinonia will surprise you. There are, when you know, see, listen, the weight on your head determines how you walk. If you are carrying a cup on your head, you can even leave it and walk around. If you are carrying a headpan, you can walk around. If you are carrying a destiny... The walk is so slippery, God must lead you on how to walk. This is what people do not understand. So this thing people generally call prayer is many things at many realms. That's why you see me encourage people. I, as I began to grow in the things of God, I found out that I cannot pray comfortably in the daytime. My life at this level will not allow me to maximize prayer the distraction that will come from my phone ringing i don't off my phone whether i'm on pulpit or my phone is if my phone is off i'm either taking a flight or maybe something is done you see that 
I charge my phone an average of twice every day. I have to because of you. Do you know living is not general? The concept of living is dimensional. Listen to me. That means when you are tired of certain things, certain experiences around you, someone else is coming into that dimension. So you are not going to say, Lord, take away those things. Your job is to rise to the next dimension. Are we together now? Yes. Once upon a time, I remember those days, if there were 30 people and I was going to minister to them, I would have to lay hands on everybody one by one. It was very exhausting. And I said, God, there has to be a better way. Once upon a time, if God is talking to me, and I see in the spirit that God wants to touch you, I will have to walk to you to touch you for that word to come to pass. That was, it was not what God could do. It was what my renewal and my alignment at that level could allow him to do. And I knew that if I continue that way, what if I have 30 minutes to preach and God wants to touch 500 people? I follow them one by one, touch somebody in overflow three, come back, touch this. How do you touch the people online? And then I said, God, there has to be a way. And he said, of course, there is a way. For I am a man under authority. And I say to one, go, and he goeth. That your words can become you. You don't have to move. Your presence can be poured into your words. You can send it on errand. Backed up by the anointing of the spirit. And it will produce the same effect. And I said, okay God, what does it take? Let's go. If you are interested. Now when you rise to that realm, you will see it. And then sometimes a new believer will sit down and be wondering, wow, how does this thing happen? If the Holy Spirit shows me that he wants to touch someone in overflow three now, you see. All I need to do is not just to speak it or say it. You see that? You agree with God. It looks simple until you are taught what really happens. You come and collect the mic and talk. I will tell you when God wants to touch somebody, your job is to just say it. And you will be very surprised to see as if God doesn't love you. So most of this prayer, Lord, why did you disgrace me? I went to this meeting expecting the result of a realm. You went to the meeting with the expectation of a realm you have not entered. Because you saw somebody and you said, no, Abba, this must happen. Are we together? There are people who carry graces. As soon as they sit down and begin to talk, something about the realm and the dimension of God that they walk in will force you to pay attention. They don't have to say, keep quiet. No. There are realms where they say, oh yeah, keep quiet now. Praise God, everybody, listen. But there are realms where there are other provisions. Some spiritual arsenals have been provided that compel men to hear you. So you can see two men of God operating. Everybody's bringing his possibilities. Are we together? Yes. To believe that everybody is just generically carrying eternal life, carrying the Holy Spirit, you are right, but you are wrong. People come with their realms and the possibilities that come with those realms. Listen to me. And that means that if and when you are tired of what you are seeing and you do not like it, the Bible says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? There is a hill. There is a level where you can rise to. Elijah was sitting uphill and he was able to see those who were coming. And he called down fire on them. He was sitting at an altitude. Physically, but that can also be symbolic of an altitude in the spirit. Papa Ia Deboe can just come and stand on this pulpit and just say thank you and speak and say, let me bless you. I declare that before the end of this week, you will be favored. 
now he's speaking from a realm you will say amen it may not sound charismatic it may not sound apostolic nobody falls nobody rises but the nature of the spiritual provision that follows his grace will insist that that word comes to pass not because you believe it for the sake of the position he represents to the body so you will see him not say well do you have there are realms where you say have faith press i'm sensing unbelief you are stopping this thing from happening truly there are dimensions where god does a thing not just for his name's sake he does it to honor the covenant he has with the vessels it's true that's why you can find somebody will come under a ministry and way before he starts learning how to tight he will start receiving results of a tighter breakthrough open doors and when you meet him and say you are so successful teach me about success it will be the worst 30 minutes of your life he will vent ignorance from a to z and say why are you succeeding he said, well i don't know and truly he's right he doesn't know and if he makes a mistake to go out of that covering in one week everything will dry because that thing will come his results will come back to look like his true realm do you believe what i'm sharing with you yes the animals did not want to be saved they didn't know how to be saved but they came under the covering of noah's ark it was built with food inside to sustain them the animals would come out after the flood like heroes but where they left alone they would die there are dimensions in the spirit and there are realities that means that if i want you to move to another dimension of results then i must be able to guide you on the principles that will transit you from where you are to where you need to be there are destinies that no matter how you pray and fast at that level there are certain levels of the blessings of the lord that may never be made manifest your capacity at that level will not allow god bless you there is no need for that level of blessing at that level are we together there are things you must be taught that means every time come look up please that means every time the word of god is coming to you it's not only edifying you listen very carefully it's not only informing you it's transiting you that means a possibility exists that you came here koinonia at a realm and by the time we're sharing the grace you think because you wore the same clothes you are the same person going out immediately you step out you will find out that the reality that followed you here is not the reality that went out with you many of you especially men of god come here and you just sit for one meeting and at the end of it sometimes you don't even get to see me and you are prayed for and that's it all you need to do is go back to your church or your fellowship and the first surprise is when you open your bible ah, ah, what is this again then you stand to pray and it will surprise you let me tell you another thing that will surprise you your worship team members that didn't follow you will start singing and you will think this is koinonia worship team you took something more than you back to your meeting are you seeing that remember you didn't call them to tell them look this is where i went to this is the grace i carried you went quietly but the nature of that grace is like a software it starts reprogramming everything around you to reflect the level you have now entered all of a sudden you find out that if you are someone who were not excellent for instance and you contacted that grace for excellence you come back with it you don't have to start teaching first you will find out that in a span of two months exceptionally excellent people will start coming to your platforms they were called there is a grace that calls them they don't hear you because you are not yet at the level where they hear there are ministries that no matter what branch you open even if they open the branch close to a mosque they must have excellent people it's not like they bring people from the headquarters the grace 
was designed to ransack the city and look for those who must make the anointing that is upon that level to walk to come. There are cities where people hardly get land for church and for certain things. But there are ministries that enter with some graces. As soon as they enter, there must be vacancy. Suddenly somebody gets visa and is going abroad and he leaves his house. And they demolish that house and it becomes a church. The pressure that that grace puts on a territory until there are results. Please listen to what I'm telling you. That means there is a grace you can carry that when you stand somewhere, it becomes impossible for people to ignore you. It's not you. You have risen to a level. That grace will begin to compel. It will orchestrate a scenario that must bring you out. No matter where you hide, something must happen. To the point that if God, if it's a grace at that level, God has mandated that at that level, any time you go, you must be seen and his grace must be acknowledged. So you are humble. And because you are in that place, God, that anointing can make somebody who has no business coming there, who knows you, to come there so that he can announce you and then leave. The grace on your life. There are dimensions of favor that you can enter into. Huh? that even if it's on a Saturday night, you speak over people, they must be blessed. Even if it's Sunday during service. It's true. It's true. There are graces. Please listen to me. There are dimensions you get to in the spirit. That when you make certain spiritual utterances and say God said, even if it's not God that said it, because of the realm you occupy, he will honor what you have said and rebuke you when you go back. Are we together? That means it is possible for a man of God, a prophet, to come and see, learn this, a prophet can come and see that Shehu is supposed to be blessed October. That's what the revelation gave and is accurate. But I can come with a dimension. Listen carefully. Until a higher dimension comes, the highest grace that spoke is what works. But when a higher grace comes, I can make that October become tomorrow. I'm not a prophet. I came with a realm of intimacy and a covenant that I have with God. And I can look at him and say, my friend, um, something fell down and you gave me. Look at this. I bless you by tomorrow. And God will take what... It doesn't mean the prophet lied. It is the implication of the realm that was introduced. <laughs> Believers hear this and grow. So if you don't understand, you may go back and say, fake prophet... You prophesied nonsense. No. The prophet himself, even that office is in levels. A prophet in this realm is not greater than a Christian in this realm. The realm which is a reflection of his work with God must bow. Listen, the office that that man has, as powerful as it is, there is a realm of intimacy you can have with God that equals that office. You are not a prophet, but the level of dealing you have gotten with, your result is the same result a prophet will get. So when you stand side by side by, with a prophet, they will call two of you prophets. You are not a prophet. You have only transited to a realm where there is no difference between you and the result of a prophet or an apostle. These are deep mysteries in the kingdom that many people do not understand. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's powerful. That means if you truly want to be a blessing, more than office, more than titles, seek to be transitioned to a deep, 
dimension of work with the Holy Spirit where there are results you will command that it looks like you are getting results from every office. A point will come, your members will not even know who you are. He said, this guy is a prophet, but are you really a prophet? This guy is an evangelist, but you are prophesying more than a prophet. And you say you are an evangelist. He said, God told me I'm an evangelist. You started as an evangelist. Your intimacy took you to the realm where only prophets should get to and took you to a realm higher than that dimension. That means it is possible for a man of God you offend to curse you in anger. And truly it will happen. But a man of God will come who is not a prophet, not an apostle, not anything. But in a dimension of grace, he has been given the power. He will nullify that thing and say it is true. Based on this course, you should die tomorrow. But I hold your hands. God, look at him for my sake. Let it go. It's true. I'm looking for the best way I will help you understand this thing tonight. These are the dimensions that are at work in us. That certain things can happen to people because certain people are there. Are we together? Yes. All of these things you see are provisions that God put in place to ensure that the body continues to grow and that we continue to receive results. You can't believe that I've not even touched my message tonight. I just came with a hunger and a burden. Let's see what I can touch. I took the A part of what I want to share last week. Responding to the situation that we have that is widespread now. People getting frustrated as to whether the word of God produces results or not. Many of you have seen the rate of suicide and the rate of not armed robbery, not Boko Haram. These are people killing themselves now. A man leaves his family and then they are called that he died. Left a note, I'm tired of life and that's it. And young people also killing themselves. And those who are alive, it's almost as if they are dead already depression teenagers having depression young people having high blood pressure all kinds of health related issues there is an answer i attempted to answer that question last week was it or the week before last that the reason the first reason that we looked at was because of the nature and the kind of mentorship and teaching are we together? I stated that people have been taught that the value of their life is in the abundance of the physical things they get. And so by the time you find out that you are unable to get a car and a house and a child and a husband and a wife and certain things at certain levels, self-inflicted frustration begins to come. Listen carefully. And as a result, people become depressed. You hear people saying, as old as I am, I, I don't have a child, or I don't have a wife, or I don't have a husband, or I don't have my own house. Can you imagine at this age, I'm still renting? Can you imagine this and that? Can you imagine at this age, I have only three girls, no boy, you know, and all of these kinds of things. And I told us that it is because, first, the kinds of teachings, please listen carefully. The kinds of teachings that we have taught people. We have taught people that spirituality, and in many circles, sadly, that spirituality is only measured in the acquisition of physical things. Are we together? So, by the time I have, by the time I have certain things for a prolonged period of time, maybe a house, a car, and all of that, I am perceived to not be growing spiritually. Are we together? Yes. Why do you still have this car after 10 years? Why are you still living here after 20 years? So that pressure to do things, to prove that the word is working. 
when our, our expectations continually become disappointed, then we are plunged into that state of depression. Are we together? But then tonight's teaching also is an attempt to bring balance to it, to help us understand it is important for us to get results. And I want to talk um, maybe just a few minutes. Our time is already spent. On the fact that I believe that many people are unable to rise to the realms. Please listen. The realms that will allow their lives reflect the faithfulness of God. Among many things because we have not learned... Thank you. We have not learned that success is not something you pursue. Please say after me, you do not pursue success. You do not pursue greatness. There is nobody who tries to pursue success or pursue greatness, whether spiritually, financially, and otherwise, that will ever have it. It is not something you pursue. Please listen to me. It is something that you draw. It is attracted to your life on the strength of who you become. And listen to me. There are certain traits. Every blessed man, every anointed man, every influential man, everyone that has been trusted with grace and influence will tell you. Listen, there are a set of traits that individuals must possess. You call it character, you call it whatever it is. There are belief systems. Say belief systems. There are, there are mindset conditionings that you must be able to have that will allow you to transit, like I said earlier, to the realms where these things effortlessly. Let me tell you this. Every time you struggle unnecessarily to get something, stop immediately. Did you hear what I said? Every time you are struggling unnecessarily to get a thing, stop immediately. It may be proof that you have not acquired the spiritual, the psychological, and the spiritual, maybe sometimes the intellectual stamina to bring that thing. This is rainy season. No farmer would go to the farm and have to labor so much to till the ground. Why? Because... Part of the provision of the rainy season is a system that softens the soil. Are we together now? But if you try to till the ground by November, December, especially at this part of the country, you're going to have a hard time. So there are certain things we are trying to get. It's proof that although you are trying to reach out and it's running away from you, it's telling you something by running that you are not yet qualified for me. So instead of running unnecessarily, cut away and stay back and build the belief systems build the track record in the spirit that makes for that thing and i tell you whatever it is that left you will come to you and stick to you and refuse to go it is true for finances it is true for ministry it is true for leadership it is true for the anointing it is true for revelation it is true for anything i want to walk you through a few belief systems tonight maybe just two three and we'll pray since our time is gone that i believe is pivotal to our entering these new seasons that the lord has spoken to us about there are many of us who can sense in the spirit that i am at the edge i am i've exhausted my current level are we together now that financially spiritually and otherwise but let me limit it to our uh, the things that pertain unto life the things that matter to our life our upkeep our welfare and so on and so forth because that is what is causing the depression i don't think anyone will go and kill himself just because he doesn't know god he would rather fast he would rather pray he would rather buy books but when you are unable to pay the fees of your children, when you are unable to do well, when you are unable to take care of your parents and do all of that, the accumulated frustration can push you to a point. Do you know that in all fairness, I think in the last one or two weeks, I've gotten at least one text every day. People just calling and saying, Apostle, please you have to talk to me. 
Otherwise, I've been sensing, I've been hearing a voice say I should kill myself. I'm good for nothing. Repeatedly from different regions. And then I knew that this, this is terrible. Hearing voices, getting frustrated, feeling my life cannot, you know, my life would not make sense. The, the latest of the suicide issues I got to hear was a man, a father who had a quarrel with his wife. This is a true story. Some of you may have heard it. A man who picked a quarrel with his wife and she took out time and blasted him and told him how irresponsible, how shameless, how disappointed she was in him, how sad she felt that she got married to him and told him, is it that his children were also disappointed? And the last they said was that the man went out. He just left and that was it. They thought he was kidnapped. They thought he was killed. They didn't see him for a few days. And they thought he was just, you know, men and their anger. Until police traced down and they found out that the man had died. And they traced that the death was suicide. Now, if you trace, I'm not talking against church. But if you trace, that man will have to be associated with a group, a church, a fellowship. Or some kind of spiritual platform. That means it is irresponsible for any man of god any spiritual leader to not at least respond to these things listen sociologically speaking men of god are also mind control systems men of god are also agents of transformation and much more than helping people to build their spiritual convictions we must pay attention to make sure that when there is an there is a psychological epidemic within a territory it is wise for every responsible man of god who has a sizable influence over people to contribute in making the people stay in a position that will not allow satan to bring all of those kinds of predicaments are we together say i need results in my life it is true that results are not the basis of our confidence it is true that results are not the object, not the motivation behind our pursuit of God and our walk in the faith. However, as I have said, I will continue to say again that results, among other things, are a system of consolation. Results are proof that you are adhering to spiritual laws. Results are also proof in many regards that God is with you. Not all the time, but many times. Rabbi! We know that thou art a man sent from God. How do we know? For no man can do these things. So when God is with you, there are some things, there are some evidences, attestations of his presence that must be there. And the Lord put it in my heart and I know by experience and by the privilege of mentorship from exceptionally successful people in the faith life, financially and so on and so forth that there might be a few things we may be missing as believers or other things that we need to inculcate that can transit us to the levels that we seek to have the results that will make us at ease to know and believe that god is faithful are we together so i want to share with us a few things that just take note of it we'll just take three for the sake of time and then we'll pray tonight hallelujah the first belief system that i want us to learn tonight that helps us to be great and helps us to transit well look up please is that all truly great people do not derive their confidence and their self-worth from the things that are outside them please listen all great people do not derive their self-worth from the abundance of the external things that they have. Cars, houses, certificates, achievements, as powerful as all these things are. No truly great man, especially in the kingdom, derives his self-worth from the abundance of these things. That means that when I buy a new shoe, when I buy a new cloth, then I feel more successful. When the cloth spoils, I feel less successful. That's a terrible way to live. Are we together now? The Bible, um, I think that should be, I hope it's, uh, what scripture now? Is it Luke chapter 12? It just came to my spirit. Let's look at it. Luke chapter 12, I believe it is. 
Jesus was teaching Luke chapter 12. Yes, and verse 15. Give it to us, please, quickly. Luke chapter 12 and verse 15. Everyone, please look up. It's projected. Here's what the Bible says. Jesus is teaching now. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of what? Covetousness. Greed. Greed. That's the word there. Greed. It says, For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of what? Things which he possesseth. That means the true value of your life and my life is not in cars, is not in houses. Are we together now? So you must bring yourself to a point where even though I'm trusting God for a car, a house, I'm trusting God for um, advanced certifications, I'm trusting God to go abroad, I'm trusting God to increase membership, I'm trusting God to have children, and so on and so forth. My life cannot be, and my sense of success cannot be defined by these things. You know why? Because these things vacillate. They go up and they go down. Praise the Lord. I was sharing, I think it was with our school of ministry students yesterday. And um, it started with the leaders during the leaders meeting. Um, I traveled to one of the states and my phone just fell into mud and water and it was just gone, just gone completely. And while they were still deciding for me what other phone I would buy to replace that one, I decided to take the old phone. Remember that my old phone that you people hate so much that you've done your best to make sure I throw away? You know, I dusted the whole thing and I got it back in shape. And then when I went for the leaders meeting, I could see the body language, all the leaders. Oh, not again. You could see apostle, you've left this, you know, and all of that. And um, I used the opportunity to start sharing with them a bit of what I'm sharing with you now. Imagine that I tied my sense of self-worth to a, an exceptional phone. I will now begin to tell myself things that I think you are thinking. Ah, that means apostle's finances is going down this one that he replaced this phone maybe he sold it all because he's broke because he's looking for something now remember you are not thinking that it is a make-believe that has come as a result of my tying myself worth to phones there are people who cannot leave their homes until they borrow certain things and wear there are people who cannot because they have created perceptions there are men of God and women of God who cannot be themselves. More than half of their life is not them. It's a dangerous way to live. Listen very carefully. I show you a quick way to suicide. Tie your self-worth to things. And sooner or later you'll find out that you will need a knife, you will need a hoe, a cutlass, or a rope to kill yourself because of disappointed expectations. There are people who have tied their self-worth to the quality and the wealth of the kinds of families they have come from. So they will deny their parents because your mother is somewhere, maybe roasting corn or selling something by the road. And the impression that you have given people is that you are an exceptional Harvard type young man who most likely has spent a major part of his life abroad. And now they need to see your mother or your father. And based on your belief system, you think that looking at her and her state will will be a disadvantage to the perception you are proposing so you will call your mother your auntie say just one of our relatives that just came to stay with us it's, i mean even me i'm surprised now seeing her outside you think what i'm saying is silly except for the fact that it is true how many people will never be proud of even their homes where they live your family house yes i know that they use mud to build it but the mud is not inside your mind but simply because you don't want we have a slang that our generation called this call it falling your hand correct how will i take these people in my department my departmental people want to greet my parents how will i now take them to a house that is smelling the there's humidity even inside the house the carpet i mean everything there are roaches flying around i don't want to be associated with that less the person who wants to marry me who has been perceiving that i'm a lady who was born inside an airplane may now have to make up his mind and change his perception let me advise you 
and let me encourage you i have a responsibility over you listen to me if you tie yourself worth to anything outside you get set for a shock in this life hallelujah god forbid but if any of my vehicles have break down and it's time for me to come for koinonia i would stop a bike outside quickly and say mr man please take me i'm late and and you know members can rob this they'll say my apostle the servant of the living god you know they they will rob it in and make you say bike stop stop let me just go back home tell them i'm not around If you need things to validate who you are, you are in trouble. Because you will never have enough things. That's why we seek to change forms. Listen, let your motivation be a sincere desire to transit to a more effective version of yourself. Not that it is in the acquisition of these things. That's why we are disappointed. Now I bought the phone. Now I, I got the new hair. Now I got the clothes. I got the designers. I expected you to notice it. And commend me and you ignored me so frustration starts are we together now did you not notice my perfume have you not noticed that I've changed perfume what is my business I'm thinking about my own destiny somewhere did you not notice I changed the car did you not notice I moved to a house have you not noticed that levels have changed I will never tie anything my self-worth to anything no matter how great they are I tell you the truth they are mundane things this teaching may not be popular but it's the way of peace it's not teaching you to be a mediocre it's giving you rest rest you've heard me say it again anything that is what's taking my life on I put it inside me God Holy Spirit quality information anything that is too big to enter inside me is not worth my attention people's vehicles spoiled and they they were too embarrassed to go to work why because they say ah Ogasi or your car spoiled my self-worth and your self-worth must be a derivative of who you are in Christ and what he has done and what you now possess so the first thing I'm advising you and listen to me koinonia I have a responsibility over you and over those who are following the mainstream mindset is to receive an applause because of things you bought a new watch how much is this watch 300,000 Wow you are wearing a 300,000 watch. That's somebody's salary for one year. Man, you are not a small man. No, and you enjoy it foolishly. Not knowing that that watch can be stolen. It, it can spoil. It can leave you. God can instruct you to sew it. Many things can happen around that watch. Why will you tie your self-worth? And then you find out that you are no longer with the watch. And then you are just looking. Someone may be noticing that I'm not wearing the watch. Uh, well, let me just explain. God asked me, to, who asked you? The, nobody is thinking about you. As they are looking at you, they are thinking about their problems. Ah, where will I call my mother now? Oh God, let someone send me 400 naira recharge card. And you are there in a make-believe of your own manufacture. Say, I reject bondage. Shout it, I reject bondage. Ah, you used to, you used to wear a hair of 10,000 before. What happened? I noticed you have started wearing the one of 115 and 2. Is everything all right with your finance? What is your business? Does the 150 not stay? Oh, please. I noticed you used to bab every two weeks but in the last one week i'm just a concerned brother it's like a, you is that you don't have money if you don't have money use bab just 
just clean it let it shine let it shine let it shine for god's sake don't be under pressure and say i must do this i must be this if you come to my house and meet me drinking gary i will only put it in a better cup if i honor you but gary you must drink i will not borrow money to buy minerals because of you no listen to me be healed of this societal pressure and let me tell all family people in Kononia, please hear me. Let nobody put pressure on you. Whether a minister, whether a leader, it should not be had in this ministry. That because anybody came to visit, they put pressure on you, you must fry plantain, fry chips. If you have it, praise God. If you don't, even if you don't have anything, put cold water in the fridge and serve. Do not derive self-worth. Don't expect people to treat you unusually just because you bought a new car. Just because you bought a new house. Um, just to let you know that levels have changed. Um, I got a job with NMPC and for starters, they gave me 1.5. And uh, because of that, I want to see Apostle. I don't have the time to join the queue. Can you please fast track the thing? I have a seed and the seed is a sizable one. What do you think I am? That's why it's good for a man of God to be blessed. Because when you are blessed, you are not looking at anybody's envelope and checking the size. No. No, we know man after the flesh. Please listen very carefully. Say in the name of Jesus, my confidence and my self-worth will never be on external things. It will be on who I am in Christ. And what Jesus has done in my life. So be proud of yourself and be proud of your level. If it's only one shoe you have, wear it every Friday. Wear it every Sunday. Let us see it as a testament. So that the day God blesses you, anybody who says it was a mistake, you will not be the one to answer. I'll say I was a witness. I saw that one shoe for two years while he was walking the world. Are we together? Sisters, don't let any brother come to you in the abundance of substance or things. Just to toy around with your mind and toy around with your life. Say, you know, I'm this and that and that. My father is a governor of which state? What is your surname? Are the states in Nigeria many that we don't know? My father is a this. My father is a king. My mother is a this. I'm a prince. As you see, I'm just a humble one. No. Whether you are a prince or not, that's not anybody's business. People should honor you because of genuine character. That you are a man of character. That you are a woman of character. is a nobler reason for honor than things. Number two. Ready? Koinonia <laughs> is growing. Praise the Lord. You must conquer greed. Write it down. The one cancer behind the, the restraint of God to bless many people. Greed. 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 You know, most people think rich people are the ones who are greedy. I tell you this sincerely. The reason why many poor people, poor Christians especially, who have an advantage of the Holy Spirit. If you have an advantage of the Holy Spirit and he's watching you poor, there's something you are doing to him. He is there as the advantage in your life. Greed. Many believers are greedy. It's shown in their givings. You started giving 10 naira as a student, as offering. And now you are director. You are given 20 naira. Is that the measure of the lifting of God upon your life? No. Greed. Closely related to greed, please write. Selfishness. A selfish generation will never become an impactful generation. Please listen very carefully. Jesus Christ is speaking to us. A selfish generation will never become an impactful generation. What is selfishness? Look at this. 
Come, doctor. Selfishness and self-centeredness is when you desire something so bad, you do not care what effect it creates on others. Selfishness is not desiring good things. It is desiring good things to the point that you do not care what it does to others. That means that I so want to get to this speaker. I don't care if I match and I, match and I put Dr. Emeka. I just want to reach there. There are many of us who are like that. Many Nigerians are like that. And I'm cautioning you because it's a spirit everywhere. It's like nobody cares about the effect of what they are, they are wanting to rise causes for others. I want to be a CEO. I will kill anybody if possible to be that CEO. Me, myself. The language of our generation is what is in it for me. Once there is nothing in it for you, it's not your business. No. It's not the language of great people. Great leaders, great leaders are selfless people. Great people are selfless people. The Bible says looking up to Jesus. Jesus did not come to the earth to pursue an agenda of himself. Please listen to me. I've taught us that it is about us but not all about us. When your life becomes all about you, then you are in trouble. This ministry was founded upon selflessness. Truly, selflessness. Many of you, as you are now, God is helping you. But you want to so grow and rise. There is none of... Our children here that is going to school because of your school fees. You are waiting till the day you become a millionaire. Some of them, their school fees is 2,000, 3,000, 10,000. You are so engrossed. You can package 100,000 and bring. Let me lay hands on you to climb the ladder fast. But a little child can come and hug you and say, Uncle, I'm not going to school. Let me die. Am I your, am I your, your father? You see that? selflessness selflessness the selfishness in our world is so terrible so terrible people will do anything and not mind they will they will hit your car on the road because they want to hurry up break your 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 what they call it your side mirror and just on you and say sorry as if that's the solution to it i'm in a hurry to wear how about many of us here? You don't care if your siblings rise. Listen, you are not called to carry everybody's load in your life. But you are called to at least pay attention to the effect of what your rising is creating. You can't ignore everybody and your whole world is about you. Ladies, listen to me. Because you are the ones that are most hit with this mindset. It is always about me. My money is for me. My everything is for me. Someone can give you 2,000 naira recharge card as a seed. You will flash him to call you so you will say thank you. What do we call that? Greed and selfishness. Listen. Listen to me. Many of our parents today, many of our parents, respectfully speaking and with due honor to our elderly people here, many of our parents, this is what closed their door. They were so willing to succeed that they kicked every destiny helper out. And when they got to a place where they needed help, there was nobody to help them now. When they were in the civil service, some of them got to the echelon of their, their pursuit. They never raised anybody. All they were concerned about is me. I must sit down and eat. And now they've retired. No young person can come and say, sir, in 1995 it was because of you i got a job today i've come with a seed to say thank you let me tell you sincerely speaking many of us here are young people but let me tell you if you are old and nobody sees the need to take care of you and to say thank you it's a sign that you spent your life in selfishness and greed are we together 
Last year during my birthday, the greatest gift that was given to me was a letter by my little children. They write me letters all the time. They write all kinds of things, but I love their letters and I read every one of it. They draw love, they write Jesus on it, they try to draw my face, they write, you have been a nice daddy, thank you. Those things mean a lot to me than chicken, than whatever it is. You eat those things and go to the toilet and it's all. But those things are a reflection. It's a sign that when you are old, those ones, they can come to you and say, make sure this person never cries, even in old age. You say, but it's not your father. He said he was better than my father. If nobody can remember you for good, it's a sign that you are digging the grave already, even while you are alive. Please hear me. Great people are not great because they are pursuing all they want. It's not all about you. Everything God gives you, people should rejoice with you because they know that by the grace of God and with all humility, even if it's the crumbs from the table, it will reach them. I look at us please look at me i can tell you why god has not answered your prayer of financial prosperity he has discerned the extent of greed that in your being blessed nobody nobody many of us are so greedy and selfish that anytime you are blessing somebody they know that you are looking for something whether you are looking for a life partner or you are looking for a destiny helper or you are looking for, for something, it is not you to give. I think if I stop giving, it may affect me. I may even fall down and die. But you know, Apostle, we are not very blessed. It's you people that God has helped. That is the talk of a greedy person. If you can't give clothes, there is food. One day you can make up your mind to cook two pots of food and call somebody and say, I may not do much now, but I am breaking the spirit of greed. Please come and eat in my house. They come the next day and say, no, no, no. I was only training myself. Don't come every day. Don't be ashamed of saying it because human beings will always take you for granted. You do it once and pursue them and don't feel bad. Tell them, please, at training, I will, when, when I get to that realm, you will come. But for now, come and eat. Are we together? Say in the name of Jesus. The spirit of greed. The spirit of selfishness. I curse it from my life. Many believers are like that. Two women or two men can be talking. I can be talking with Dr. Emeka. And in his presence. I will bring out 2,000 naira. Buy egg roll. And minerals. And hold it while we are talking and finish it and eat the egg roll and squeeze the leather and match it. Hapa! It's inhuman to live like that. Giving is living. You must trust God for grace. Don't wait till you are a millionaire. I'm telling you, listen, this, these are belief systems that will make your life exceptional. God will never trust a greedy and a selfish person. When he sends a word to Jacob, it's because Jacob can let that word reach Israel. If God gives you money, can God look at many people in Koinonia today and say, instead of blessing five people and giving them school fees, I know they are coming, but can I bless you? And then they rejoice. The angels rejoice and say, these children have gone to school. Why? Because one person was blessed. What does it take for God to give you a job? What does it take for God to turn the economic tide in your life? It takes more than studying business. Let me tell you. It takes more than we've taught you a lot and you know that there are astute business people in this place. We're not just men of God. We're not daft people. We're economically sound. We're financially sound. But I tell you this. Much more than just the value you give who you are is higher than what you do. I had a conversation of recent with a very wealthy man, such a rare privilege, and I met him. 
and I asked him one question I said sir let me ask you one question I said what kind of people will you be looking for at this level and he looked at me and smiled and said apostle you are very smart I said thank you sir my mind was just on the answer and he said should I tell you honesty he said yes and then he kept quiet and took a deep breath he said I will answer you in a story and then he told me a story and at the end of it he said let me test I already told you you're intelligent what kind of people do you think I'll be needing I said trustworthy people he said that's it the morale of the story he gave me was that he would pay any amount to have people who are selfless enough he said every storekeeper and every foreman he employed cheated him and 95 percent of them were christians recommended by pastors he sincerely told me that the non-believers who have handled that branch of his business have been more honest than even the people because of greed 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 let them know that the word is working so you steal everything you steal cement you steal everything and sell it and quietly cover it up do you not know that when truth was buried it came out of the grave hallelujah there are very very listen let me teach you this if you are a businessman here please more than value and productivity look for selfless people when you find selfless people you have not found cheap people you have found priceless people our generation is full of everybody who is looking for everything for myself let me quickly cash in on the moment while i have the time some of you looking at me now as born again as you are let me keep you in a room with plenty money scattered if i count it you will behave because it's counted but let me just scatter it and leave you you will first check whether there's a cctv look around and pray in tongues so that those outside would think there's prayer going on and you just bend as if you are sweeping and carry one and put in your pocket who do you think is watching god alone demons angels the demons that will oppress you and you will shout in the name of jesus <laughs> are you joking please i pray for you in the name of jesus that the grace to be selfless may that grace come upon you yeah. there are nurses that are not selfless is that not so in your hospital there are doctors that are not selfless a woman comes she wants to give birth and they're acting as if please madam if you would die self, just die there whereas that woman has been trusting god for a child for 12 years and you see the greed and the selflessness are you from my tribe are you from my place are you from here no selflessness i these are the things i pray for for myself these are the things that have brought blessings to my life that you show god i told you that the lord told me if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you there are many of you that desire anointing apostle anoint me and i look at you it's not even god even me i know the things you will do if that anointing really comes yeah. you will first run to your enemies and say you are finished you don't know what i'm carrying just know it's over and if you think i'm joking you you will die tomorrow you you will die on thursday by the time you kill people in a row in one week you say what this grace is powerful even me i didn't know it's this powerful listen to my message can god trust you go and listen to it please media let our family online and in diaspora listen to that message can god trust you powerful message many times it is not just in the fasting and the prayer as powerful as it is is positioning yourself god let me be your treasurer on earth the last treasurer betrayed you 
here is a faithful one and God is saying can I trust you say yes trust me God gives you 500,000 your spirit is still sound your head is still sound and he sees how you bless people you say you did this for me let me take it to another level whereas all your prayer from your small mind is God give me 5 million oh God give me 5, five million will change my life based on what your mind told you whereas he's thinking of giving you gold as dust and giving you the keys to the hearts of nations Lord give me the grace to prophesy as soon as God gives you that grace you just say I found my stream of income I'm not wasting my time for anything again I would never prophesy free I it didn't it was not I got the anointing at a cost and God says you see your heart you were there fasting I warned you and now that you have the anointing and because it is valuable people will now begin to pay hundred thousand per prophecy thirty thousand per prophecy and the truth is that the grace will work and while you are paying and paying you are happy you are building houses collecting people's houses collecting people's cars and doing all of that God is watching you he's watching you because he knows one day you will exhaust that realm so you'll go back again and say Lord I'm here he said, it's not me you are talking to it's not me you are talking to I gave you a grace I saw what you did with that grace Lord give me the kind of apostles grace and he tests you 20 missed calls by 1 a.m. you don't answer any one of them the 21st one you call and say let me tell you something I'm a human being too I sleep I this I that I hate you don't do this to me again the next time you do and God says look at the grace you want listen 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 please look at me selflessness is an unusual virtue that is the reason why not everybody has it why will you reward everybody when they have the same thing dr mike Murdoch says that our similarities create our comfort it's our difference that creates our reward hallelujah how far can you go for the sake of people how far can you go for the sake of god some of you have vehicles you've never carried anybody after service even if it's raining you horn them and say you are going and god is watching and you already say no god i'm trusting you to give me one car that i saw on my way going somewhere and God says you think I'm stupid there are some of you even if it's on a bike or a bicycle you will never help anybody may God never give you anything that you will regret yeah. did you hear what I said may God never give you anything that you will say I feel pained that I gave this man this maybe I'll stop here Let me just talk about it the third trait you must embrace is humility i have to talk about it our time is gone but spare me two three five minutes humility humility please look at me the bible says love not the world nor the things that are in this world he says if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him then it categorizes the things we can love into three the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh number three is called the pride of life there are many people please listen to me you see ba africa hear me now i'm not just talking to zaria i'm not just talking to nigeria i'm talking to africa listen to me because of our background huh and the way we have suffered and the way people have looked down on us and some of us because of our cultural context please listen to me there is that itch to be celebrated there is that itch that urge to be perceived as great and valuable are we together and there's nothing wrong with that we call it spotlight is the slang we have for it some of you i just mentioned spotlight you're already laughing i mean you just imagine yourself there's nothing wrong with that except for the fact that 
Pride is one thing that will make God fight a man. God will not fight a man because of sin. God will not fight a man even because of disobedience. But pride. He says that God gives, opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. One of the, one of the, one of the greatest justification for pride is wealth and achievement. Please listen. Wealth and achievement. Every time God warned people of pride, it had to do with wealth and achievement. Deuteronomy chapter 8, you don't have to turn there, just read. The Bible says, let it not be that when you have what? Built houses and done this, done this and that achievement, that you will say, my power and the might of my hand has given me this. And then verse 18 says, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he, it is he, leave the remaining statement, it is he, he is the focus. Humility is not refusing what God has done. Humility is not simplicity. Humility is acknowledging God as the basis of every achievement that you have. Outspokenly, in your body language and in your conversation. God, it is unto you. Apostle Joshua Selman. The great man changing people. Ah, a man can receive nothing, precious people, except it is given to him from God. It's very difficult for some of you to say this thing. Why? Because you feel if I say it, I'm taking away the spotlight from me. Pride. There are many people, there are many parents who would have been lifted, but pride pride they will not be good examples look at me let me tell you why some of you are finding it difficult to access the blessings of god to lift you you are not going to be a good model being blessed you are the best christian model at your current state if you rise higher than that especially financially you will kill people some of you if you rise financially your mother your father your siblings and everybody they will kneel down to greet you every morning simply because you paid rent simply because you paid this i failed in life and people i think i'm a failure but now that i've succeeded i will rub it on the face of everybody no that is the way of the world we are kingdom people can you be blessed and still remain humble can you be blessed and still stoop down to people's levels can you be blessed and not disturb people with noisy of your achievement? <laughs> just, to, just to meet you and say, ah, um, um, just to let you know, are you aware that I just came back from Lagos and uh, I flew in? You came. That's the most important thing. Whether you crawled, whether you drove, whether you flew, avoid some of those, those talks. I was in the plane and, ah, you know, I was, uh, I was, I don't know, have you ever sat down in a business class? Because I'm trying to explain something I don't know if you can understand. You see, let me tell you, this is why many great people are persecuted in the church. Because we don't know how to keep quiet. Success is already loud on itself. If you dare rub it in, members all and sundry will get back at you and they will find a reason to get back at you. Let me tell you something. It is difficult to criticize a humble man, even if you are right. Humility paralyzes you. you what will you now say? Are we together? I'm saying this because we are in a very prophetic season where God is lifting many of us. Many people are not humble. They are only broke. By the time the blessings of the Lord comes, you will see the attitude, the pungency of pride. Pride is one thing that is a destroyer. Even if you kill Satan and all the demons, proud people will still die. There is nothing that gives me beauty and glory as the world shining the light on me. Then I hold the light and shine it. I'm proud to be the usher shining it to say people, 
thank God for Joshua Selman and everything. That's why you notice every time people want to celebrate me for anything, I become uncomfortable. When I'm preaching, I can be bold, I can be this. If I drop this mic now, and you start saying, well, there is a man here, that thing Shade was doing. You see that I felt like dying. If I had my way, I would just send my picture to stand and represent me. But some of you, you like it. As joking as it is, some of you, as you are sitting, you are ah, let my month come. If they give me this opportunity, I will first cut the cake and lift back the knife. Let them snap me alone before everybody comes. The urge, the urge, the urge to outshine. Huh? In, in, a, in a secular business way, that's all right. But in a kingdom way, the, the urge to want to just receive vain glory. Please, you must trust God to conquer it. Conquer it. Conquer it. It's one of the big restraints that many of us may face. You know, many times I pray for you. Sincerely, I do. And I ask the Lord, I say, Lord, continue to bless and lift my people. I'm a, among the many things I get impressions of in my spirit is their tendencies. God doesn't directly say pride. Tendencies. Vulnerabilities. Things that can happen that you are not aware of. If you ever think money does not have power, think again. Did you hear what I said? Think again. Money has power. Put money in a ring with any boxer, it will beat him out before he enters. Money is powerful. Anything that can turn a man around without using sword is powerful. Anything that can relocate a man without advice is powerful. Money is powerful. But when it begins to come, with it, it will solve other problems and create others. Hallelujah. Can you let Jesus be seen in your life? Can you be lifted? That 10 million naira just entered your account and you still come for koinonia and just sit down. Not to say, if you push me, if you push me, if you push me, please, I don't have time for thieves now. What happened? God has blessed me. You're laughing. But these are the things that are enshrined in our hearts. So that they will know I'm a big man. So that they will know I'm rich. Well, for your information, that Jeep you are seeing is my car. For your information, just to let you know that uh, I'll be in UK on Tuesday. Quickly touch the US Thursday and I'll try to make coin on you. I'm still coming. God is watching all those things. It's not a testimony you are sharing. There are many things that are not testimonies. Testimonies, the goal of testimonies is edification, not announcement, edification. So the part you stress in a testimony is the edification. Truly, let me tell you something. I vowed a vow to God. And I say, Lord, whatever you will give me that will make me proud, I'm praying in advance, no matter how I cry, don't answer me. Don't answer me. Humility is a powerful thing. Can you have access and still be humble? Can you have increase and still stay humble? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't say we are like that in our family. It means all of you need to hear this message. It doesn't mean you are right just because everybody is like that. We are like that. If we have it, we show it. If we don't have it, we don't show it. But it ought not to be so. Jesus is teaching. When you come into the kingdom, you don't come with the baggages of your belief. You drop it aside and adopt the value system of the kingdom. There is nothing as powerful as being blessed and being humble. Your life is a message in action. In action. And it's amazing that many people what you call wealth is not wealth it's just a test 1.5 and people are in trouble 1.5 entered my account i have 1.5 million oh well now it has gone back to 1.4 i use hundred thousand and while you are talking you may believe you are impressing everybody whereas scattered among you there are accounts that if you see you will not wake up again you will not wake up 
I'm telling you, it's not the you. There are some things you act like you are used to seeing. No, there are things you are not used to seeing. You will see things that you will not know what part of your body to react with. And yet, people can have those things and be quiet. Moses had the ability to prophesy from morning till night. The grace of the prophetic was so much in him. Yet, Moses was quiet. Part of his spirit was taken out. They called elders who had followed him. 70 people received the spirit of Moses. Nobody could keep quiet. Ah, I thus hear the Lord from morning till night. And Moses was watching them. Moses said, this thing that is making you make noise, times 10 of it is what was in me, yet I was quiet. Can you have so much and be quiet? Can you know so much and be quiet? There are people, if you know so much, when someone is talking once, is wrong. Let me correct you, sorry. That's what I studied. No, no, that's my field. I won't keep quiet. It is powerful to know so much. There are times that I listen to people as they talk. And many times what they are saying doesn't make a lot of sense. Spiritually and even intellectually. I know a lot more than what they are saying. But I honor them because they have more results than me. I keep quiet and I just hear. You understand what I'm saying? I say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And what the man is saying is, is, is quite honestly nonsense. And I just keep quiet and I listen. He say, ah. And sometimes they are, they are flattered. They are impressed because of the whole thing. Just listen and say, yes, sir. And keep quiet. Not, sir. With all due respect, I don't want to talk quiet. We're just keeping quiet. But, Sakai, this your thing is outdated. No. You lose many opportunities like that. In the name of Jesus, may this ministry even with the things that God is doing, bring people who are exceptionally blessed and humbled. That a time will come when people will pack cars that if you want to see it, you only come for koinonia and you will not even know who is who. People will just be rolling, rolling on the ground. It's after the grace. You will just see a tiny lady say, let me rush home. You think she's calling a bike man and she will enter a car that was your dream that you planned to buy in 30 years. And you say, that's the owner. I said, that's the owner. That lady is a CEO of something. He said, was she not the one rolling up and down? That's a message. Koinonia extended. Extended through your life. Don't brag around and move around making noise. I have this. I have that. Listen, when you are under pressure to keep saying things, it's a sign that you have complex yourself. You must be healed, be strengthened. When God blesses you, you cannot hide light. We are going to pray. Our time is up, but we must take two or three minutes to pray. More than having things, these are the things you must become. And your life becomes exceptional. Lord, take away my tendencies. Take away my vulnerabilities. Take away the things that can happen to me when I rise to certain levels. I desire you to take me to certain levels of blessings. But Lord, I know that there are things that are enshrined within my heart that will, will limit your workings in my life. If someone praying tonight, lift your voice and pray. Tonight's teaching may be a hard teaching, but pray is a maker of great people. Pray. I owe everything to you, O oh God. All that I am and all that I will ever become, let it be unto you. Let the name of Jesus alone be glorified. Alone be glorified. When men see me, may they see you. May men not look at me and forget about you. May men not look at my results and ignore Jesus. That when men see my life, it will remind them of who God is. Is someone praying tonight? Hallelujah. The last prayer point because of our time. Please, I want you to pray this with all your heart. Pray and say, Lord, don't restrain your hand from me. I am trustworthy. 
you can trust me with the wealth of the kingdom you can trust me with access you can trust me with influence i will not bring your name i will not bring reproach to your name through the pungency of pride that will come out i will let men know no matter how you lift me i will let men know that jesus is the reason for who and what i am unashamedly consistently intentionally but lord do not withhold your hand of blessings in this season you are lifting men lift me do not withhold new wines from coming upon my life pray for yourself pray for koinonia let it please you oh god to trust me with everything you are pouring in this season wisdom grace lifting anointings access everything i receive it in the name of jesus hallelujah praise the lord in one minute please hold the hands of somebody close to you we are going to pray for koinonia as a ministry lord as you lift us you are giving us a voice across this nation you are giving us a voice many of you have seen the mighty things that god is doing in and through this ministry god has made our song a praise to the nations and god has so exalted himself i like you to pray pray and say lord as you lift us we declare that never will there come a time in this ministry where men will see your walkings and forget about jesus lift your voice you love this ministry pray pray online continue the lifting oh god let the teachings continue to transform men let it enter the hands of people we declare it's a vow and a covenant that jesus and him alone will be glorified as you announce us as you lift us as you honor us in the name of jesus we decree and declare pray for everyone connected to this ministry pray for every business pray for every career pray for every achievement and every achiever pray for every business person pray for every ministry connected to this ministry pray for our children father we declare that in this season that you are announcing and lifting men jesus alone will be glorified Lord, I obtain grace to wait. Lift your voice and pray. I obtain grace to wait. I obtain grace to wait. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as the eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Please pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One more prayer point. Father, my heart is opened. My spirit is opened. Visit me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. My heart is opened. Visit me tonight. Visit me tonight. Give me a visitation tonight in the name of Jesus. hallelujah praise the lord father we are here tonight in the name of jesus we are here again in the school of the spirit 
we are here again in the place where you make men my help cometh from the Lord the maker we are here to be made we are here to be lifted we are here to be enlightened we are here to be empowered we are here for very definite encounters tonight and Lord we cry we cry in the name of Jesus that our expectations will not be cut short tonight we pray that you will heal the sick we pray that you will deliver the oppressed let the veil O oh God that stands between our desires and their manifestations let the veils be torn into pieces Holy Spirit we grant you access not only access to this place but access to our lives access to our minds access to our hearts access to our destinies that you will manipulate everything to look like Christ we give you all the praise in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen please be seated God bless you good evening hallelujah praise the Lord let me again welcome very specially all those who are worshiping with us for the first time it's always an honor as we receive people who have come from different places far and near hallelujah tonight we're going to pray but then what I'm about to share with you tonight I pray in the name of Jesus that you will never forget it for the rest of your life I pray that you will add it to the archives of the mysteries of the kingdom Amen. that you will use to wrought righteousness in this life Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. I remain committed to sharing with us the truths of the Word of God that make men that lift men that empower men and when these truths come it's important that our hearts receive them receive them receive them are we together you can listen but it does not mean you are receiving you can hear you can even take notes there are two notes there is the tablet on your hand and there is a tablet of your heart it says do not let them depart from you keep them in the midst of your heart they are life to those who find them and health to your flesh hallelujah psalms 106 verse 4 koinonia is a place where every time we gather it's not only an encounter with the holy spirit it's a feast of light the mysteries of the kingdom the principles by which the saints command victory in their lives and in their territories we're going to read two verses together and then I'll just establish a few things and we will pray. Psalms 106 and verse 4. Please let's read together if you can see it. One to read. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people. O visit me with thy salvation. Scripture number 2. Isaiah 49 from verse 14. To 16 Isaiah 49 let's read together one to read but Zion said the Lord hath forsaken me and my Lord hath forgotten me 15 can a woman forget her suckling child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb yea they may forget yet I will not forget you 16 behold i have graven thee upon the palms of my hands thy walls are continually before me help us holy spirit the book of remembrance write it down i want to share with you a very powerful and deep spiritual mystery very deep spiritual mystery the book of remembrance 
Apostle John was banished on account of the testimony of Christ. Please sit down. And whilst John was in heaven, he had access to many, many truths about the operation of heaven. John was told to write a letter to the seven churches in the then Asia Minor which were a typology of the complete church admonishing them across different lines of the spirit walk then john had access to the throne room where he saw the worship of the father and the worship of the lamb then john had access to the things that will happen thereafter he began to see the end of times and the desolation that would come upon the nations then when we get to chapter 20 john is given the privilege again to go to the throne room and he's watching and john testifies that there are books in heaven and books were opened the book of life was only one of the books this is john's record and we know that his record is true john said he saw that there were books in heaven that those books had many functions and that those books were for earth there were things that happened in the earth that were captured in those books one of those books is what i want to share with you what it represents in the lives of the saints It's called the book of remembrance The book of remembrance memory is a very deep spiritual mystery please look at me memory is an advantage that God gave man it is because of the power of memory that you are able to remember it is because of the power of memory that you are able to preserve knowledge are we together now it will be impossible to advance in science and so on and so forth if you lack memory memory is a system of retention is God's intelligence given to man an ability to retain things because God is not only a giver he's a keeper but I know whom I have believed follow me tonight and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed so God has many systems of keeping things. There is a system that keeps the prayers of the saints. The Bible says the prayers of the saints arise like incense and they are collected in a vial and stored. He's able to keep. Hallelujah. And that one of the things that can be kept in heaven 
is the activities of the saints in the earth and that there is a book called the book of remembrance now the book of remembrance to a carnal man would suggest that god forgets the book of remembrance is not necessarily supposed to remind god as though he forgot no the book of remembrance is one of the ways that god administers justice in heaven please understand this in the judiciary some of you who are lawyers and are legal practitioners you have a very thorough knowledge of the constitution however there is a manual a compendium of all of the policies that should govern the activities of men within a defined territory and when you are in the law court i pray that god will open your eyes tonight when you are in the law court you not only need your memory you need the books the books that archive and represent the basis of your advocacy the judge himself before he would pass a declaration no matter how experienced he will make reference to the books and consult with the things that are written there please listen very carefully and as he consults with the things that are written there he would be able to come up with certain verdicts there are people who look guilty until the book bails them out there are people who look innocent until the book proves otherwise and then we see that there is a book of remembrance the activities of men in the earth the bible clearly lets us know that there is the all-seeing eye of god now if you studied fine arts you would have learned something called perspective is that true that means that a viewpoint you can stand from an angle and they will ask you to capture every information you can find paint it draw it let it be represented are we together now the same applies for technical drawing and anything that has to do with construction you are taught to be able to capture realities and images and information from different angles now so when i am here now i cannot clearly see overflow one i almost totally cannot see overflow three i cannot see our online people and so when we talk about the ability to see it's difficult for us to understand how god sees because we think that god uses his eyes to see the realm that god dwells in listen very carefully the realm itself is an eye the bible says listen carefully that god dwells in unapproachable light that he is full of light and in him there is no darkness no shadow of turning no variableness are we together now so that everything that surrounds god everything emanates light and so there is no possibility of darkness i hope you know that darkness also means the absence of information the absence of truth so that from the realm of god it is impossible for any activity to happen within a sphere that is under the jurisdiction of his creation that he cannot see are we together now the concept of sight we only know it based on what physics would teach us or medicine and and all of that but you have to look at sight as a product of light if the bible says there is no iota of darkness that means there is no absence of information there is absolutely nothing upon the face of the earth that the all-seeing eye of god the creator cannot see now this is very powerful because there are things that you would wish a man saw so that you would be able to advocate for you for instance the injustice that happens in our world 
are we together now people can be oppressed and use their earthly influence to manipulate injustice to become justice but the bible records that while all of that is happening in the earth the all-seeing eye of god is there a system of vindication that what men cannot vindicate you on there is still hope are we together now please follow me very carefully so we're discussing books here god sees all things god knows all things god is everywhere this is the unique attribute of god that he did not share with man it is what qualifies god to be in a class of himself god gave man any other thing gave him his image gave him dominion gave him the holy spirit but god did not give man omnipresence god did not give man omniscience god did not give man omnipotence these exclusive dimensions are reserved in god's class man does not know all things man cannot be everywhere are we together now this is very powerful so the bible records that every once in a while god would seem to show up in the earth and then begin to backdate certain things whether for good or for evil that there is a system by which god can go back in time and begin to deal with an issue that you may think has been long forgotten and that there is also a system where god can go back in time and begin to reward the saints for certain things now please understand what i'm telling you then the bible comes to the earth realm and begins to teach that men can forget are we together now scripture is scattered with this possibility that the best of us can forget your memory card can crash is that true your laptop can crash there's something in medicine called brain damage i don't know what it is but i i have an idea that whatever it is it represents a state where your brain for some reason may not coordinate at the frequency it was supposed to there are people who have gone into coma is that true and they came back and could not identify their wives their husbands is that true they didn't even know themselves they didn't know how to walk again how to talk again now i hope you know that if memory is not a possibility you will not be able to walk you will not anything you did now you will not remember again so that memory is an advantage you can archive yesterday and use the information for today i don't have to learn to walk again i learned it once it's been recorded it's been stored anytime i need to walk i use the mystery of remembrance are we together now listen very carefully i don't have to learn alphabets a to z again i did that many years ago but because of this power the ability of retention through memory and the ability to call the past into your present not everything in your past is bad i can call that knowledge and use it today is that true if i raise a song now that you used to sing when you were small it's amazing how effortless you will still sing it remember you did not rehearse but for the power of remembrance but as as flawless as men are they still forget they can forget i can give you a promise come show i can give you a promise meet me tomorrow and i'll give you one thousand naira and excite you you may remember but i may forget whether for health reasons demonic manipulation or just whatever it is and you come to me making a demand and i say no 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 i cannot remember and i rob you an opportunity to enjoy this blessing simply because i forgot there are people who are not employed today because their helpers forgot they forgot where they kept their cvs are we together now 
there are three stories in the bible that are very interesting they are testaments of the mystery of remembrance and how the saints can tap into this as one of the mysteries that caused them to command dominion and very quickly we are going to look at it remember this is a prayer meeting story number one genesis chapter 41 i'll run through the story very quickly the bible tells us that joseph when you begin to read from chapter 39 then chapter 40 the bible lets us know that joseph now from potiphar's house on account of an accusation remember what relocated him was an accusation potiphar's wife lied that he raped her and then they relocated him to a dungeon a prison and left him there and then the bible says one morning that joseph watch this joseph noticed the countenance there were many other people in the prison but two were worthy of note the buckler and the wine presser the bible says they all used to serve the king and for whatsoever reason they annoyed him and he threw them into the dungeon and so they were there with joseph and then the bible records that joseph on seeing them he called for their attention and then they communicated dreams they had heard and joseph said tell me the dream and i'll help you let's see what can happen and then the butler brought his own dream and then the wine presser started first and the interpretation of his dream was in three days the king the pharaoh of egypt will call you out of the dungeon and you will be restored back to the palace where you will serve the butler was impressed at this news and said i also dreamt and he said okay tell me your own dream i was holding three baskets upon my head full of bread he said and suddenly the ravens came and ate of the bread and joseph said oh dear this is what it means in three days you will also go out of here but the only issue is that when you are out of here you will be hung and the birds will eat your flesh so he was done and then he quickly told the wine presser please when you go to pharaoh do not forget remember me tell pharaoh now that you are with me in the prison we don't lie in the prison there's no point lying you are already there prison is where they tell the truth a lie is told so you will not go there but once you are there you see that so at least we've been able to discuss as co-prisoners you know the truth now please go to pharaoh and use the opportunity you have and tell him that there is a man who is who has been unjustly accused and whose destiny has been unjustly tied i can imagine the one press i say no problem god bless you when i go back the first thing i will do is to tell i must make reference to the person who prophesied to me it's amazing how good things can make you forget where you came from and can make you forget that you need to help others too this is man for you are we together now i i can imagine them hugging themselves loving themselves blessing themselves and saying look i'm not sure you'll stay more than one week in this prison again now that i'm out by evening just imagine in the prison that we're discussing your issue and joseph will say thank you but the bible i love the bible the bible says that when he was reinstated it noted that the man forgot joseph joseph remained in the prison for two years because one man's memory went bad please understand the implication of this not because his skill went down not because god was no longer with him the memory of his helper could no longer capture the need to help him and the man was there full of grace full of gifts full of potentials full of prophecy full of dreams but at the mercy of one man's memory are we together now then the bible says when god was now ready to remember by himself genesis 41 let's start from there i've saved the long reading of chapter 39 and 40 genesis 41 
let's start from verse 1 and it came to pass at the end of what two full years take note of that information two full years that pharaoh dreamed and behold he stood by a river verse 2 and behold there came up out of this this and that and that jump to verse 9 let's save time verse 9 now remember let me just save us the stress he gathered everybody the sorcerers and everyone and said i have dreamed a dream that has troubled me the pharaoh speaking now and he attempted to get those who would interpret for him and they could not interpret and then the bible says verse 9 then spake the chief butler unto pharaoh saying i do remember i do remember my faults this day next verse pharaoh was wrought with his servants and put me in word in the captain of the guard's house both me and the chief baker and we dreamed a dream in one night i and he and we dream each man according to the interpretation of his dream read on and there was with us a young man was he not supposed to say this earlier but because he could not remember two full years were added to a man's experience and now by the mercy of god look how effortless he's remembering everything that means the information was still in his memory something stopped it from coming to light follow me please it does not look like this man forgot the story so why could he not remember look how articulate he is in stating everything remember his brother was now two years old in the grave he had died and he still remembered everything he says there was this young man an hebrew servant to the captain of the guard and we told him and he interpreted to us our dreams to each man according to his dream did he interpret 3 13 and it came to pass as he interpreted to us so it was me he restored unto mine office and him he hanged 14 hallelujah 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 the power of remembrance then only after remembrance then pharaoh sent and called joseph and they brought him hastily hastily that means speed was a possibility in his life but just because the memory of the benevolence what he did could not be remembered this man remained in the dungeon and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto pharaoh now when you begin to read the remaining parts after interpreting the dream at that moment joseph is reinstated and not only reinstated promoted to get to a point where he became the prime minister of egypt and pharaoh made a declaration that only in the throne would joseph be lower than him now remember that everything in scripture is a type of christ and the church are we together number two everything in scripture is prophecy the bible says the things that were written are for time they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope are we together now yes so joseph is put on that throne and then they bring him an egyptian wife are we together now the daughter of potiphera the bible says the priest of own and she became his wife and they too became the rulers of egypt and under their leadership egypt began to thrive and excel even in the times of famine now notice everyone who came to buy grain to survive only did that because one man remembered look at the miracles that were associated with remembrance the reinstating of a man the fulfillment of a prophecy the saving of a nation and the then world from famine for seven years were at the mercy of one man's memory everybody say the book of remembrance 
if one man's memory can produce that kind of boomerang effect one man just remembering and the king fetches him from a dungeon and he becomes a representation of God's purposes within his day then it means there is something we need to know about the power of remembrance number two in Isaiah chapter 38 please give it to us verse 1 the Bible talks about a man called Hezekiah are we together now in those days verse 1 please look up Hezekiah was sick unto death everybody say unto death that means that something was about to end in his life and the Bible says Isaiah the prophet the son of Amos came unto him and said thus saith the Lord now when God is speaking and and I hope you know that Isaiah was not a fake prophet Isaiah was a genuine prophet thus saith the Lord set your house in order for thou shalt die and not live who is speaking God is speaking through a mouthpiece called Isaiah and saying Hezekiah I hate to be the bearer of bad news but you are not going to recover you will die and Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord let's see the contents of Hezekiah's prayer ready and he said everybody remember now remember when I remember my wrong this day that's what the butler said remember now oh Lord I beseech thee how I have walked before you go to the archives and check God of heaven I know there is a verdict upon me now but I place a demand on the mystery of remembrance remember that you are a just God righteousness and justice are the foundations and I have become a lawyer at the point of death I need to plead a case and I'm using the remembrance he says I have walked before you in truth and with a perfect heart and I have done that which is good in your sight is it not written that if they obey and serve me they will spend their years in prosperity is that true now Isaiah is bringing before God he said Lord I know you are God but something is wrong with this verdict I know that you can remember there are archives testaments of my uprightness before you and I bring it before you and I plead although you are God remember next verse then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah again so the Bible is showing us how God remembers now watch this he's praying remember the content of his prayer remember the Bible is showing us how God remembers that when God remembers a thing or a person this is how he acts verse 4 again please let's go back to verse 4 so that we understand what we are doing then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah saying next verse go and say to Hezekiah thus saith the Lord the God of David thy father I have heard your prayer of remembrance I have seen your tears behold I will add to thy days 15 years verse 6 and I will deliver thee and this city out of the king of Assyria and I will defend this city and then you will read on he used the sun as a sign to go back 15 degrees so that he would know the certainty of the things that were spoken everybody say remembrance if you knew Isaiah and Isaiah died you say oh dear I mean Hezekiah Hezekiah you have gone but Hezekiah refused to die and Hezekiah used remembrance to insist that oh God remember I have walked uprightly before you and the Bible says God remembered he turned his situation around the last story is a prayer meeting Harush <laughs> Kalabrakosi Atakatosh story story once upon a time there was a king called Ahasuerus and that king the Bible records 
that he was lord over 127 provinces then the bible lets us know that he was married to a woman called vashti and that the king would usually as they did in those days flaunt their glory including their wives are we together and it was time to bring vashti to the scene and vashti refused and i hope you know that what vashti did was not really it was an offense but it was not that bad it was because she was in a position that she had the power to influence other women if the king ahasuerus was not a king an ordinary man the suggestion would be counseling counsel them and say that's all right you are not the first just make sure you don't act like a stupid woman tomorrow but because she was in a position the king was such a nice man he didn't want to act but his advisors came and said no 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 these people are models that means not every offense carries the same gravity at every level you will do tomorrow what you did today and the consequence may be more are you seeing that now and then the bible says vashti is banished then the scene changes and the king calls for young virgins to come all within the province and then the bible says in shushan there was a little village girl called hadassah are we together yes the she was the niece of mordecai one who sat at the gate now please follow my story then the bible says a time came when certain people were conniving to dethrone Ahasuerus and Mordecai heard that information and he took it to the king and told the king that this and that such and such is to happen and they apprehended the people and justice was administered then the Bible says it was recorded and left are we together now yes. so cut the long story short Esther becomes queen but in that same palace the right hand man of the king who was a friend to Vashti obviously are we together now by the name Haman the Bible says that this man was antagonistic to the purposes of God he hated the Jews I believe had they left Haman for long enough one day he would have implicated Esther herself because his plan the Bible says was to annihilate the Jews one by one he would first focus on the ones outside the palace and then deal with the ones within the palace so her man was making life very difficult are we together now and then every other thing that happens is the hand of god and how he delivers people but now let's go very quickly to esther chapter 6. on that night look up please on that night could not the king sleep and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles and they were read before the king i hope you know that the book of esther again is a type of our relationship with the christ esther being his bride the church Mordecai being the Holy Spirit. Are we together now? Haman being Satan, the accuser of the brethren, who once had access to the throne, who was now banished. Are you getting the point now? Esther being queen. King Ahasuerus being the father. Now understand all of these stories. The Bible says that on that night could not the king sleep. Was it not in your Bible that you should give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem? Are we together now? So the Bible says that they were read before the king. Next verse. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bithana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hand on King Ahasuerus. Verse 3. And the king said, What honor and dignity 
hath been done not will be done that means under normal circumstances this man should not be in this situation after communicating that level of benevolence what had been done to this man Mordecai for this then said the king's servants that ministered unto him there is nothing done for him there is nothing done for him the company runs by your intelligence but there is nothing done for him the lives and the destiny is saved through your love for God but nothing done for him next verse and the king said who is in the court now her man was coming to the king the outward court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai look at this 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 wicked Luciferian type of attitude that means if the book of remembrance were not open for three more days Mordecai would have died remember it coincided with when you wanted to get the permission to finally finish him ah it's good to be remembered on time it's good to be remembered on time now here is a man i'm sure the man had discussed with his wife we will hang that man today but that same time quarter to shame may god arise for someone in the name of jesus christ just when the desire of the wicked seems to find expression by the intelligence of God and by the mystery of remembrance, may God raise help in the name of Jesus Christ. Follow my story. Her man was in the outward court of the king's house to speak to the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. The guy had dug the gallows. I'm sure in his mind he had imagined how Mordecai would die. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. God can remember. Next verse. And the king's servant said unto him, Behold, her man standeth in the court. And the king said, Let him come in. Let's read on. Look up, please. So her man came in, and the king said unto him, What shall be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor? When God is ready to lift you. Now, notice, when he was talking to the chamberlains, he said, what shall be done to Mordecai? But when her man now came, if he said, what should be done to Mordecai? He said, uh -uh, what will be done to the man whom the king honored? I hope you know this same mystery was used to conceal Jesus. When the Pharisees came and said, are you the Christ? Who are you? John said, I am the voice of one crying. That means I will not tell you I'm Elijah that will forerun the coming of the Lord. Are we together now? Jesus Christ, that concealing continued to happen until the father finally declared, this is my beloved son. So now Mordecai is hidden as the man who the king wants to honor. Now her man thought in his heart, watch this. To whom will the king delight to honor more than to myself? So his selfishness was about to propose a fantastic idea to his peril. He makes diviners mad that God can turn their reasoning backward so that they will not perform their enterprise. And her man answered the king, for the man whom the king delighted to honor, comma, let the royal apparel be brought before the king before which the king used it to wear. That means her man had even been eyeing Hazarus himself. Are you seeing it now? Yeah. You are told to honor a man. And you say, king, you have many robes. There's one that you wear. Let it be done to that man. When you start wearing the king's clothes, you are shifting closer to the throne. My God, and the horse that the king rideth upon. Does that sound like Satan to you? 
I will be like the most high. I will arise above the stars of God. The same spirit that walketh in the sons of disobedience. It says, And the crown royal which is set upon his head. Verse 9. And let this apparel and the horse be delivered to the hand of, of one of the king's most noble princes that they array the man without whom the king delighted to honor. Listen. And bring him on horseback through the streets of the city and proclaim before him, thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor. Full stop. What a wicked man. Because he thought about himself. And listen, that opportunity only allowed his lust and imagination. Everything he had imagined to happen, by all means, now he had the chance. And he said, King, this is what should be done to that man. Next verse. Hallelujah. Ah. Then the king said to her man, Make haste. And take the apparel and the horse that thou hast said, and do even so to Joshua Selman. There is a strong anointing on what I share with you. That seated at the king's gate let nothing fail of all that thou has spoken nothing next verse then took Haman the apparel and the horse and arrayed Mordecai and brought him before the horseback through the street of the city and her man was dragging Mordecai. Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor. Next verse. And Mordecai came again to the king's gate. Now notice this. Let me explain to you what this means. Look up. After all that clamor, when Mordecai was done, he returned back to the gate and sat there. Will you climb the king's horse with his apparel and not go to the throne and sit down? Mordecai said, I will stay where I was lifted. There was a place I stayed. Even though I am rising, I will not forget that it was my service at the gate that caused remembrance to come. Can you wear the king's robe? Ride the king's horse? And still remain where the king kept you. The king had not promoted him. The king gave an instruction. I'm sure while Mordecai was on that horse. He was saying don't be carried away. You are not yet in the palace. You will go there but you are not yet there. And he came down. Imagine the entire crowd. Say Mordecai I'm sure you are the assistant now. And he says watch me. Let me return back to the place from whence that grace found me I cast my crown before the highest royalty I am undone before your glorious majesty you're the king of kings and lord of lord you are the king of kings you are the lord of lords your glorious majesty someone be mordecai tonight hey Sujata, 
Listen, this right here is how great men fall. When they are tested with power, when they are tested with lifting, when they are tested with the anointing, when God begins to lift you and sudden lifting come overnight, chances are that you will forget. Deuteronomy chapter 8, don't turn there. It says, let it not be that when you have built houses, when you have done all these things, you will say, my power and my might has gotten this. He said, but thou shall remember. Listen, it's not only God alone that has a book of remembrance. Men must have books of remembrance. When David stood before Goliath, he said, the God who delivered me I remember what happened. The God who delivered me from the bear, delivered me from the lion today. He would deliver me from this uncircumcised Philistine. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. Forget not. Forget not that he took you from nothing. Forget not that there were 10 of you in your family and you are the first to rise now. Forget not that it was, you, you started rising before you knew anything about favor. Forget not. Let's just stay here and let me teach you something very powerful, my brothers and my sisters. A man who can remember is a man who can be sustained a man who can remember the faithfulness of God remember where you were yesterday remember the hand that lifted you that is the man that will never go down pastors forget businessmen forget years ago I remember I watched a Nigerian film of a village girl who was loved by a wealthy man i don't know the name of the film i don't even know who acted it are we together now and he picked this village girl i think she was selling something granite or you know the way they do nigerian films and he saw her and liked her and picked her his parents insulted him he said kill me i would marry this village girl and then like 11 years or so down the line she had become the wife of this man and there was another village girl who was a house help in that house and this one's village girl ill treated this woman ill treated the young girl until one time i think she got blind or paralyzed or something and when she was paralyzed it was the small girl that stayed with her in the hospital and then a pastor came to pray for her for uh, uh, healing or something and then she began to remember that all of this and that and that then the long and short of the nigerian film is that she later discovered that that girl was her sister the little girl i think the, maybe the mother had the child somewhere also that was a sister that she was ill-treating let me tell you this the bliss of the palace made the butler to forget the bliss of greatness the applause of men you know most people sit down and say what is there in fame what? no 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 there is a reason why remembrance is necessary you want sustainable anointing you want sustainable impact please learn to remember you need to have a book of remembrance that is in the similitude of that which is on the throne i remember that 10 years ago when i was nothing this gentleman came I remember when I was soaking Gary, for instance, you would say, I remember. So that you don't see him 10 years later and push him. No. There are mistakes you make when you are outside of the palace. It does not matter. If you make those mistakes in the palace, you will pay for it. First, she could make any mistake outside the palace and go scot free. But now this mistake on the throne would cost her so much. 
thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Thou shalt remember. Many have forgotten their fathers. Many have forgotten their mothers. Many have forgotten those who played all kinds of roles in their lives. Many have forgotten the God that lifted them. Many have forgotten the hand that helped them. Please listen to what I'm telling you. God is speaking to someone here. That a man can rise so high that the scar of yesterday's pain can so erode from your life and your mind it will never look like you were there it will never look like you ever climbed a bike in your life it will it will never look like you soaked gary i know sometimes we are excellent people but sometimes we allow the deception of success to so swallow us that we lose the ability to forget i have learned as a personal principle that modesty is the closest way to remember when you live a life that is modest temperate the bible calls it that he that strives for mastery is temperate that means define boundaries it was a mistake solomon made he refused to be temperate by the time we get to ecclesiastes solomon was a man who was utterly lawless and careless see let me tell you this i believe in prosperity i believe in all the blessings of god but look at me believers there is only so much cloth you can wear there is only so much food you can eat are we together now this is all the stomach you have another one will not come from anywhere thank god for all the cars you will have you will not remove one leg and put it in one jeep and remove your head and put it in another car the way we approach success if not guided by these mysteries many people will fall by the wayside this is why you find out uh, respectfully speaking this is true for men of god is true for business people is true for politicians they begin to rise and when the whole world is watching suddenly they vanish out of thin air the mistake of haman and the wisdom of mordecai are two lessons we must learn Mordecai rides on a horse, the king's horse. That honor is an honor that I don't think even the queen had. And when Mordecai dropped, he said, thank you, Haman. He returned back to the king's gate. That's where they found him. Was it not on your knees the anointing found you? Have you returned back? <laughs> Was it not in the place of fasting and prayer that grace met you? Was it not in the place of dedication where you will roll like this, my dear brother that was rolling left and right? I'm sure for some of you that was so embarrassing. This guy is falling his hand. So our, our deceptive approach to life tells us. Listen, if you were lifted on your knees, remain on your knees. If you were lifted while singing his praise, remain singing his praise. It's very uncomfortable to remain on your knees when the world is watching you. It's embarrassing. You are not that naive. You should stand so you can shine. Apostle Joshua Selman, the man of God, anointed. But when you remember that if God forgets you, anything can happen to you when god forgets you anything can happen it's a lesson we're still going to move on but i need you to get this listen i have shared this for years and told people be careful i have warned many people in my life and said if if you don't pay attention with the way you are managing success you will fall by the wayside it was not prophecy some of them thought it was nonsense nonsense and today sadly speaking many of them have gone down as if it was not god that lifted them do you know the higher you rise the more slippery the path is a day can come when you will even be ashamed to roll before God.
why will I roll my designers on the ground in the presence of kings and in the presence of nobles this was the mistake that Saul's daughter made that made her remain barren when David it was time to take the ark David danced and danced and rejoiced like a fool and the daughter of Saul said, King, you are no longer a shepherd. You are carrying a stupid bush mindset. You want to embarrass yourself. You are no longer, a, you are a king. Act like royalty. And he said, I'm dancing before God who took the kingdom from your father and gave to me. And the Bible says, God had that conversation. When God had that conversation, no matter what would have happened, she wouldn't have given birth. Because... An indignation rose I continue to tell God I say Lord I remain your boy huh I am other people's father I am other people's mentor I am other people's role model thank God for that but I remain your boy you will always meet me where you found me Adam where are you I heard thy voice but I hid it because I was naked he said her man let's continue say it please her man hasted to his house mourning crying and having his head covered next verse and her man told Zeresh his wife and all his friends everything that had befallen him and said his wise men and Zeresh listen then said his wise men and Zeresh his wife unto him if Mordecai be the seed of the Jews before whom thou has begun to fall thou shall not prevail against him but shall surely fall before him that means this mistake you have made Mordecai is the seed of the Jews there are commandments that have been given the Jews to not forget if Mordecai is a true Jew and will remember those ordinances you are finished because the factors that should make him fall and give way will not happen again your doom is true look at this Mordecai once at the gate now I, I want to save us time because you read later on you find out that her man was hung at the gallows all kinds of things began to happen in his life culminated by Esther's declaring to the king that this man wanted to destroy her people and the king went to his garden to think like any wise leader would do to not be hasty in speech and then he came and knelt down and was begging her and when the king came it looked like he was trying to rape the wife and the king said not only have you annoyed me you are now trying to rape my wife go and hang this guy the gallows was there waiting for them and they hung him there and that was the end of it and then eventually Mordecai was honored to take the place of Haman in the palace and that ends the story of Esther listen carefully there are two women only in scripture whose names became the books of the Bible and their names were written there so that we will remember what they did the two names Ruth and Esther were put in the Bible the two women did the same thing notice that in all cases it had to do with men it had to do with marriage and it had to do with the power of submission the power of loyalty the power of not trivializing the things that God can do and the remembrance that follows Ruth remembered her mother-in-law and said I'm not leaving you your God will be my God your people will be my people and because she stayed and remembered how this woman was nice to her as a mother-in-law she led her and advised her to a field of a wealthy man called Boaz are we together now yes and Boaz saw her and loved her and took her I hope it is very interesting because for Esther she had never married but for Ruth she lost her husband and now an opportunity was coming again remembrance 
the book of remembrance that archives the works of the saints and that there is a reward system attached to it and that once you can invoke the mystery that will make god remember now take note he's not remembering because he's forgotten he's remembering because it is part of the ordinances of heaven for administering justice remembrance let me show you a scripture i found that really really changed my life and then i'll give you two keys and we'll pray never forget this scripture for the rest of your life nehemiah chapter 13 and verse 14 please read with me everyone is projected if you can see nehemiah chapter 13 and verse 14 one to read remember me oh my god concerning this stop 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 that means you can take any matter to god and provoke remembrance concerning this you can put your this there concerning my finances concerning my family situation concerning my joblessness concerning the tragedy happening you can go before god and say remember me oh my god concerning this and wipe not my good deeds that i have done for the house of my god and for the offices thereof when the lord showed me this scripture i remember crying like a baby i said this is powerful lord do not wipe these good deeds with all humility you can go before god lord i have served lord i am a faithful worker i stand before god it is true that i clean the seats lord i stand before you that you can go concerning this this is how to petition the parliament of heaven remember concerning this and all that i have done do not wipe it out for the house of the lord and for the offices thereof so god remembers and every time god remembers god acts please look at me my dad is such an amazing man quite a very very amazing man one thing i learned from my dad that i thank god for he's still alive i truly thank god for is that my dad was an extremely grateful man my dad paid attention i saw this growing up if you did something striking my dad would make a big deal out of it and will continue to raise a memorial over that act one time they were traveling to the village and it was in the night i don't know what took them there it was really late and the car broke down i think it was raining and there was they asked around and there was a mechanic now they were more than halfway the journey almost in the middle of nowhere and the mechanic was brought and he had to look at the car and the mechanic not only looked at the car i think i hope i'm right he followed them right to the village so that if anything happened he would be there do you know from that time until i left home every time my dad were traveling he would buy potato or buy something and stop at that house and say where is this man this was even it was it was more than 10 years down the line he was still doing it remembrance remembrance there are people today who are not supposed to be sitting with kings but are sitting because the kings remember their fathers remember their mothers you said you are the son of who that man let me tell you a little story in 1961 i was a young boy from the village with a torn trouser when your father gave me a cup of water the cup of water that was what 10 naira is now what a great destiny because of remembrance when god remembers you you are lifted when men remember you you are lifted you need the book of remembrance to be open. Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be 
if you left me now where would i be you wait thank you jesus do you know let me tell you in my personal walk with god there are things that god has done in my life even to this day he continues to do them and most times when i go before him to say thank you he will remind me of a particular kingdom not necessarily a sacrifice he will tell me that this that happened do you know there are families before i finish my story there are families that will never go down do you know why because they didn't have all the money but they left a little room for missionaries they left a little space and every man of god will come you would think the people are in ministry their job is to cook and you would think those things will be forgotten but there is a book in the heavenlies where these things are recorded and you will see the child will come many years later sometimes the child may not even be serious with god but for that covenant of remembrance god will come and visit the children remembrance i once watched the documentary of fiji island the revival that happened in fiji island and it was said that the missionaries the early missionaries who got there that the people oppressed them and killed them or butchered them or did something very tragic and then they died the moment they died is a documentary i think you can find it somewhere the fish in the sea stopped producing fish the land stopped producing at its maximum it wasn't even producing the nation literally plunged to depression until some intercessors began to pray they began to pray and to pray and to pray and then the lord revealed to them that there is an indignation that is rising over that territory and that they needed to plead the blood it would take the blood of the eternal covenant to solve this problem and then they had time to pray repent on behalf of the nation and then in addition fortunately they found the grandchildren of the missionaries that they had killed the grandchildren and they invited them to fiji island and they performed a ceremony officially apologizing loving them and they prayed and blessed the land just like child's play within a short time i don't know what time frame exactly strangely they saw fish in the sea and sea of fish that they had not seen the first crusade that we had as a ministry the first crusade it was in plateau state i remember one of the the people who was guiding us the tour guide he took us to the graves of the missionaries and showed us the missionaries that were killed when they brought the gospel to that land and showed us the missionaries and showed us everything and that from that time that they killed the people all kinds of things had been happening in the land and i remember standing there to pray and we said lord the lord is gracious and compassionate the bible says he's slow to anger and rich in love we stood there and said we are also missionaries and in the name of jesus christ we stand by the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of any abel there and to speak and say in the name of jesus that the land be released i tell the truth and i lie not we were somewhere standing and we were watching a hill and all of a sudden physical dark shadow like every boy you could record it we just began to see it slowly moving out of the land it took almost 45 minutes so it was not something you would rush like that just moving corporately out of the land where i schooled secondary school there used to be a tree the tree i'm not exaggerating the tree was dried but all the leaves were on it they tied ropes around the tree and you would ask and they would tell you there was a story that the tree was cursed there was a story that happened around there cursed as a memorial over the land why would god tell the nation of israel raise a memorial in this place and teach your children that means they should not forget if they ask you why do you do this teach them that this is why we do this 
so that you will know this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate keep it keep it my son he says pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings he says do not let them depart depart from your mouth keep them in the midst of your heart then he says they are alive to those who find them and health to their flesh as a man i've had people in my life who i almost cannot reject helping and lifting because they the the power of remembrance they will always remember and make reference and say apostle thank you you did so 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 and so to me you did so 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 and so to my family and they remind me of god and i'm compelled every time even when they don't ask me anything it's like their remembrance of that is is a debt that that i must pay i am moved to wanting to help them again many have forgotten like haman I want to employ the wisdom of Mordecai that you never forget where he brought you from. Are we together? That there is remembrance. Now, let me teach you before we pray very quickly. Two keys. Two keys that open the book of remembrance over a man. There are two scriptures that will reveal these keys and then we'll pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. This is the first key that you will need to open the book of remembrance over yourself, over your family, over your territory. Let's read together. One, two, go. And let us not be weary in well-doing. Uh -huh. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not watch this the first key that opens the book of remembrance is consistency of your well-doing regardless of reward regardless of who sees you regardless of whatever commendation comes or does not come consistency weariness is something that can catch up with you when your value is not being appreciated when your impute is not being noticed are we together now we're humans and if you continue to strive to contribute in the life of a man a ministry an organization a system and it looks like you are not noticed and you are not rewarded the side effect is weariness and the bible says let us not be weary that means that your reward is tied to your consistency this country is full of stories of people who deserve to be rewarded politically spiritually are we together financially in business in ministry but for many years they had all kinds of hamans around their lives around their offices yet the people continue to be steadfast many of our loved ones have situations where they were qualified to be the ones sitting at certain positions but manipulations happened and yet they continued being consistent the bible says if you are consistent if you are steadfast if you are unbending in well-doing the bible gives you a guarantee that a season according to the law of times and seasons the law of time and chance because it happened to them all the bible says one day like the hand of a clock it must come to your turn and you must find expression this is true this is true I met a precious lady yesterday one one dear lady I used to know her that should be 2004 2005 in the campus here she used to sing in one of the fellowships wonderful lady she would sing her heart out dance and celebrate God everyone wanted to attend the fellowship just because I mean the lady would lead worship with all she was always smiling always happy and then I had the opportunity to see her yesterday and I saw her she was happy now a mother of many children and I looked at her and then she brought me her album 
and said apostle i remember those days and i said oh dear who told you god does not remember who told you god forgets the sacrifices of the saints there are things you are doing today you are already securing tomorrow with it a day will come you will watch the video of this level of koinonia and tears will come out of your eyes you say that was me cleaning the chairs that was me playing the keyboard and someone stands to say you are not supposed to be where you are and god says it's too late your consistency imagine if mordecai got tired and said look i'm tired of bailing the king out and then her man would be receiving the glory mordecai was consistent even when he rode upon the king's back he returned to stay where he was found everybody say consistency listen this is an encouragement to someone right now the worship team got it powerfully what's that song again you are not turning back where's tosin not turning back and not going just sing that part for me i'm gonna wait on you jesus 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 yeah, that's the song i'm gonna I'm wait on back now i'm not turning back now i'm not turning back now i'm not turning back now one more time i'm gonna wait on you jesus 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 and i'm not turning back now 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 Listen, let me teach you something Impatience will always give birth to what will fight your promise You must sustain the stamina to stay Let God meet you where he last instructed you Lord, I will continue another woman who showed us the power of waiting was anna the prophetess the bible says for about 60 years from the time she lost her husband listen carefully for about 60 years she was in the temple do you know what it means to pray without results for 60 years abraham did it for 25 years hey my soul wait thou upon the lord there is power in waiting there is power in staying there is power in remaining i keep sowing i don't see the heavens open but i will continue sowing i keep speaking i may not see the result but i will never stop speaking i will keep serving i may not see the result but i will keep serving I will hold on to the word men may mock me they may call you stupid you are wasting your time where is the consolation when the lord turned again the captivity of zion we were like them that dream and our mouths were filled with laughter and they testified among the hidden that the lord had done great things for us it says the lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad Turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev. The Bible says, they that sow in tears. Listen, Koinonia, it is possible to sow in tears. And the Bible says, in due season, John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing. Hear me. Listen to me. You must conquer the pressure that men will bring to you. They will push you into seasons that are not yet God's design. They will push you into things that are not yet God's design. Mordecai, can you remain in the palace? Can you stay at the gates? Mordecai looked at Haman and knew that Haman was occupying his position. But the battle is the Lord's. He remained at the gate. If Haman tried to fight Mordecai, 
Mordecai would kill him because Mordecai, her man was the king's friend. Can I tell you this, my brothers and my sisters? It will not always look like this. Let me speak to you. It will not always be that you will go home every night and wonder, what do I eat? No, no. The Bible says, while we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. Man of God, it will not always be that you go to a meeting and the power of God will not be there. No, you, you are in a season. Stay, stay, I'm prophesying to you. You are in a season. Build stamina and stay. A day will come when the glory of God will mantle you. Stay while you learn. Jesus, you are savior, not at age 12. You are savior, not at age 18. Jesus, you are savior, not at 30. You are only savior at 33. The 18 year old Jesus would not save the world. Joseph, you are a deliverer, but not in the pit. Please listen to what I teach you tonight. These are secrets of the kingdom. My soul wait. So the first key that causes the book of remembrance to be open. The book of remembrance in heaven and the book of remembrance before men is consistency. Keep praying. You look like a fool but keep praying. Bros, you are still here. Five years you are not making progress. Your colleagues have started ministry. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there while you pray. Listen, let me tell you. One of the most powerful virtues of the spirit is self-control. Many of the gifts of the spirit are tied to it. Why should I keep quiet when I can prophesy? Why should I not talk when I can preach? There are people in this ministry that I love so much scattered in and around they are mighty men in the spirit in ministry some of them are mighty business people in this ministry multi-millionaires you will never see any pressure to be known any pressure to be seen they come and sit down they serve God they worship God yet they are mighty prophets they are mighty apostles let me tell you something when you see a man that has self-control respect such a man it is powerful to have what to say and keep quiet it is powerful to know what to do and still remain it is powerful to see a door that is open and yet not move if the door is closed it's not a proof of your stamina the door is closed but can you stand before an open door and yet not move hallelujah this is very powerful I've had the opportunity to meet a lot of great people in my life and sometimes when people want to tell me who and who I'm going to meet they'll say ah, apostle this man is a great man or maybe he's an influential man politically or he's a great man financially or spiritually and apostle ah, these people have this and that and I stand before the Lord God of heaven and I lie not I have never been under pressure to tell anybody sorry sir can you help me and buy recharge card uh, I, there is a ministry called koinonia if the ministry is blessing you can you send 10 naira no no consistency God is ministering to someone now because you see let me tell you this there are many of you that coming to koinonia is even an embarrassment to you because by the time you come they look at you and say for five years no car no nothing the only thing you do is to pray like a fool. The only thing you do is to loiter around. And sometimes you can feel stupid for being consistent. I give you a scripture. You are already opening a door. Stay there till the door opens. You see, the thing about God is that five minutes to your lifting, it will still not be like it. Five minutes to your rising, Joseph, you are still in the prison. While the person has left the palace and is coming to you already, you are not seeing him. Oh Israel, when God is already winning the battle, you don't have to fight, but you are not seeing. Just believe in what Jehoshaphat is saying. Hallelujah. Con 
consistency. I will pray as before. I will fast as before. I will worship as before. Listen, never be ashamed of your today. You will miss it tomorrow. Receive the grace and the stamina to stay. Let people laugh at you. Let people mock you. Especially for our dear ladies. Because society has all kinds of pressures on ladies. Show us your husband. Is he a rich man? Show us this. Show us that. Have you traveled to um, 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 Asia, America, London, UK? And you stand there feeling stupid for loving the Lord. Let us not be weary in well-doing. There are preachers that need to stay. Lord, what should I do now? Should I start a church or should I stay? And God says, just keep doing what you are doing. In due season, we shall reap. Can I tell you this? The season of reward for a man's life is a fearful dimension of that man's life. For reasons you cannot tell and explain, you will see that God will command the territory to begin to sing your songs and to speak your purposes. David was going to be king, but for a very long time he was in the wilderness. He killed a lion, but remained in the wilderness. He killed a bear. If that news got to Saul, they would have called him to serve in the palace, but he would never be king. Sometimes don't be quick to announce your achievements. Let God and time reveal it. Just come. Kill the bear, but remain quiet in the wilderness. This itch to talk sometimes is proof of weakness. You sabotage where you are going. Did the Bible not already tell you that you cannot light a lamp and hide it under a bushel? Waiting is very hard. It's proof of spiritual maturity to wait until seasons come. Hallelujah. I've shared with you my story for many years in this ministry. God would not allow me buy a car. Even when Koinonia was on, crowds of people here, I would climb a bike and come for Koinonia. You would think I were a stupid person. It was not lack of finances just like that lord why do you want to humiliate me i love you so much why won't you leave me to buy a car then people started bringing cars to give me and god would tell me to just bless them and let them go if i were your relative would you clap for me for that kind of brain you would just be careful what you call common sense it has destroyed many people the way of the spirit is very strange I will never forget one time a man came to sit in front of me and said this is what God gave him he was going to bring me car keys and he carried the keys of the car and I was already smiling when he came again mm -mm. he said this man has not discussed with his wife his wife would join the people who would talk about you and say you have manipulated the husband I appreciated the man prayed for him with all my heart and told him to carry the car and go you see that Will I ever have a need of a car today? No. Never, ever, forever. Listen, waiting pays. When God wants to pay you, he will backdate it. Press down. Shaken together to make room for more. Fill it till it runs over. sustain the stamina to wait shut your mouth and your ears against the things that people say and all the rubbish and the nonsense that you will hear people say you are on your way to a dimension of grace he's training you he's teaching you listen you can stay with god you are lifting people out of the wheelchair and god will tell you not to honor one invitation sit down lord as what be a brother in welfare not even prayer band not even any place lord at least let me go to prayer department he says welfare is where i need you but lord are you aware i'm a prophet and you, i will be a prophet to the nations he will say cook let me teach you how to feed men and you are there turning food and somebody says do you ever have the ambition of being a chef and you almost want to want to slap the person and say are you do i look like a chef and God says, turn it. I teach you how to overturn. And you carry.
carry that cooler on your head and you are marching and someone says, ah, emoji was it not you that was in our house yesterday he said this you mean i thought you were a pastor say no i work in the welfare department what kind of church is this is it that they don't see men of god in this church and you feel stupid you drop that cool and say no god this this lady i she 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 saw me prophesy god says carry that cooler because it is while you are carrying that cooler you are qualifying yourself a day will come you will be able to carry any luggage and not be ashamed because you learned how to carry something embarrassing hallelujah i always tell people jokingly i didn't start ministry preaching let me tell you you've heard my story i started ministry playing keyboard for a reverend who were part of the, the it was a prison ministry they were part of the people who preached later on to general obas and joe when he was in prison they used to allow the mission agencies to go and preach they preached to him i used to play keyboard for them i had my local church and then later on he started a church when he started a church it was quite a distance from where i would live i would carry my own keyboard by myself this was 93 94 i would carry keyboard by myself and trek to the international hotel where he was using and drop it there I will play that keyboard they will finish share the grace i will carry it and trek back with joy the only thing i ever got throughout my time of serving in that ministry was one cassette and one bottle of fanta when they were dedicating his album i would have been offended and i would have been angry and say you don't know who i am the proof of sonship is servanthood if you can serve you are a son indeed let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus though he is god he considered it not robbery he came and humbled himself died even the death on the cross wherefore on the strength of that do you know that jesus was almost giving up at gethsemane as a man if it's possible let this cup pass over me i said nevertheless not my will but yours be done so this is the first key someone say i will continue better is the end of a thing the bible says than the beginning thereof it is not enough to start you must trust god for grace and listen my brothers and my sisters i admit to you that it is painful your humanity will catch up with you while you wait yes as a gentleman they will look at you and say i used to know you in 2000 you mean you are still here how much is this shoe you are buying which church did you say you are serving he said now i've been promoted i'm a deacon he said deacon deacon indeed your useless life looking like your yesterday you have not changed and you stand there feeling stupid for serving god and god says continue i almost gave up Sam. And like I just couldn't take light anymore. This is an encouragement for someone. My, My problems held me bound. Depression weighed me down. But God kept me. So I wouldn't let go. God's mercy kept me. So I won't let go. God can keep. He can give strength to the faint. Whatever you have to do, keep moving. Even if you cry, cry, but keep moving. Even if you feel discouraged, keep moving. Insist that I will never stop. If God has not stopped on me, then I will not stop on myself. I know he's called me to be a worshiper to the nations. My first song, they forgot it in two days. You may be saying. Some of you put your songs online. After three months, only two people liked it. No problem. Just continue. Some of you put your sermons online. 
and you had only four comments and all of them were criticizing you go back to bible school someone wrote nonsense another person said look false prophet and he just said i will never go online again i will never preach this thing again no reinhard bonke said the first time he used to escort a man for crusade and that day the man told him god said he would not come back again reinhard bonke would be the person to preach and Reinhard Bonke said he was shaking. He was saying, Lord, is this how you have chosen to embarrass me? And he stood and began to preach. And he began to minister to the sick. And people started shouting, blind eyes, I can see. Deaf ears, I can hear. People were rising out of wheelchair. Please continue. Receive the grace to continue receive the grace to keep praying receive the grace to keep speaking yeah. hallelujah someone can come to your family and say kai this is your family you will never change you people are just like this keep declaring with my eyes will i see the salvation of the lord surely there is an end my tomorrow is better than my today i will one day be called beulah and hefzibah i am the planting of the lord a well watered garden thou hast caused men to ride upon our heads we walk through water and through fire but thou brought us into a wealthy place the lord is my light and salvation of whom shall i be afraid he won't stop he won't stop till my life looks like him he won't stop he won't stop till i look just like him i won't stop i won't stop till i look just like him i won't stop i won't stop till i look just like him please sit down key number two and then we'll pray the first key that can cause remembrance towards you before god and before men is to not be weary in well-doing continue rewarded or not continue commended or not continue understood or not continue number two isaiah 43 verse 26 thank you jesus isaiah 43 and verse 26. Want to read Koinonia? Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. God is speaking. Put me. Lift up a cry from the earth to heaven and say, Lord, remember. Put me in remembrance. Put me in remembrance are you ready for one powerful scripture you should add to your library if there are five scriptures in your library let this be there ah i found this scripture day before yesterday i was meditating it fired like an arrow from my head to my feet i blasted in tongues i said that's right you see the bible said the kingdom of god is like a man who lost his treasure and you find candle and boom you sweep it when you find that you rejoice numbers chapter 10 verse 9 numbers 10 verse 9 look up koinonia and read it with faith in your heart ready one to read and if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppress you then shall ye blow an alarm with the trumpets and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God. And ye shall be saved from your enemy. I now know what they did in before Jericho. That when you stand and your enemies overwhelm you. Lift up the trumpet. Is the power of praise. Oh, shall he scabber with us? Lift up that trumpet. The word is yada. Praise. Lifted with understanding. That when you see that you are encompassed. 
by enemies and there is no way for victory when you pray in addition to that prayer put God in remembrance then don't disturb him again lift up your trumpet and begin to blast it like the priest that you are go around your Jericho while you blast the trumpet go around your Jericho while you blast the trumpet and the Bible says that sound that shofar will come before God as a memorial this is scripture see let God be true and let every man be a liar hallelujah please take it higher for me look at this scripture it says you shall be remembered before the Lord when you lift up your trumpet I just saw a trumpet this is what I saw in the spirit like a sound a shofar Hey, 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 my Chetona, I got a can and Ogara. Hey, 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 Oh, I will never go. I never go. I will never I will I I he says then shall the earth yield for her increase so the earth can yield when you stand before a barren land he says put me in remembrance then when you are done praying all Paul and Silas after you pray sing and let the mighty one that sits upon the throne come and rent the heavens the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run it to it like the ark of Noah and they are saved Listen, the Bible says, though the olive may not produce, they may not be fixed on the vine. He said, yet, yet I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will joy in the God of my salvation. My Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. It says, though weeping and joys for a night. Koinonia, hear me. Joy comes with the morning. Listen. There is one thing I know about God. That no eye has seen. No ear has heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man what the lord has in store for them that love him but the bible says he has revealed them that when i praise him when i lift up a cry 
and say lord remember me concerning this when i'm done saying it i begin to sing and dance like a madman and sing my way to another level and dance my way to another dimension it does not make sense he said i will sing unto the lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and his rider has been thrown into the sea hallelujah please hear me do not trivialize what you have heard do not trivialize this deep mystery your destiny helper has a book of remembrance men have books of remembrance listen there are things you have done for the kingdom some of you have served god some of you have prayed some of you have helped men some of you your parents lifted people and everybody has forgotten about you let me tell you what to do when there are men in your life who can help you and they forget about you don't go knocking their offices you are you are doing it the wrong way go to the god of all flesh the father of spirits raise a cry before him unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come lord i bring before you this petition i am a member of welfare department i am a member of prayer band i'm a member of worship team let god be true he says to lift up that incense and then begin to sing can you open your mouth and begin to blast in tongues pray in the spirit Koi noni a pray, man of God pray, businessman pray, kavya person pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please look at me. Esther chapter 6 verse 1. Please media help us quickly. Esther chapter 6 and verse 1. And on that night could not the king sleep. The same way Nebuchadnezzar or Zedarius could not sleep because the three Hebrew boys, Daniel, was in the lion's den. Listen, I'd like you to pray in tongues for the next one minute. And listen, this should be your focus when you pray. Father, wake everyone sleeping who should be awake to remember me. Lift your voice and pray in the spirit. On that night, then could not the hallelujah hallelujah so number one the king had to wake up number two 
he commanded to bring the book of remembrance you are about to pray say after me in the name of Jesus say father I stand by the blood and in the name of Jesus and I declare tonight let the book of remembrance in heaven and on earth concerning me concerning my reward let it be open now lift your voice and pray Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please look up. Look up. Listen. The first time the Spirit of the Lord opened the book of Esther to me. The book of Esther as a book containing a mystery of favor was opened to me. It was a February of that year the entire month i prayed favor i prayed favor into my life i believed it with all my heart because i found it there that books can be opened hallelujah now listen favor is real please hear me don't sit down and waste your time and hate god for nothing favor is very very real hallelujah all blessings come from God through men to you from God through men to you when the book is opened in heaven the spirit opens the book and the bride also opens the book on earth it is the spirit and the bride that tells the word to come listen it is not difficult when the book is opened Ahasuerus said what should be done to a man who the king chooses to honor is a choice it's a choice god can choose to honor you jacob have i loved esau have i hated there is nothing that can be done when god's jealousy has been invested upon you listen to me believers in christ we are people who are beloved do you know what it means to be loved that means God has made himself vulnerable to you. Beloved, I have loved thee with an everlasting love, he said. And I have drawn you with my loving kindness. But that the book of remembrance be opened. I have seen these books opened. Even for me, I've sat down quietly and suddenly God brings to my mind the names of people. Not word of knowledge not word of knowledge god does not just tell me their names god connects something they had done to my life and i suddenly become indebted to them i just remember a woman had done something for me years ago very trivial thing i think it was towards the end of last year 
it just became a burden in my heart for no reason clear the school fees of the children help them with whatever you can do it was a burden the woman never she was not even in contact with me i didn't even have her details and i had to look for someone i said please can you help me access so so, so and so say yes i said please let me have her details and suddenly i looked at it and i said okay no problem madam can i help you this is what the lord is putting in my heart the woman said this is an answered prayer i've been crying i'm a widow i'm a widow see let me tell you don't go around harassing people to help you that's not the way it works everything works in the realm of the spirit stay and pray and declare and declare and sing and declare that the heavens open up its book that the seven seals be broken that it be opened weep not for the book is opened when the book is opened that remembrance suddenly someone will call you and say ah, i forgot you remember what happened to the butler i remember my wrong this day have you not blessed people in your life did you not win souls in your life have you not served the purposes of the kingdom hear me believers don't be ashamed of your service it is a memorial that can rise before god hezekiah turned his face to the wall and hezekiah cried and said remember oh god do not forget bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord oh my soul and forget not his benefits lord you have said if i obey and i serve you i will spend my years in prosperity my days in joy you have said it and i serve you with all my heart let the blessings that follow service follow me it's a petition you are placing a demand like mordecai the bible does not record it but i believe that whilst mordecai sat at the gate he continued to speak and call upon the god of the hebrews avenge me my adversary her man is in the palace causing mayhem to me and to the people of the lord arise in your mercy listen there are things that can happen between you and god on account of your service that when the enemy raises an assault against your family against your life you can stand up with a counter petition lord remember remember when god is jealous towards you it has happened it has happened i'm telling you what i do myself and i'm sharing with you these secrets koinonia let me tell you this is october but if you believe the things i'm saying and the books are open you will be surprised at the unending you will come and testify here that someone who forgot you remembered you and said sorry is your father still alive is your ah. when joseph met with um benjamin and all the other brothers he asked them a question he said is your father still alive is everything well with you is this well with you fetch them and bring them to egypt they brought them they settled at goshen and they were prosperous until joseph died and joseph said when you go out of egypt carry my bones carry this principle carry this pattern with you don't lose it this is the structure it's an ordinance carry it together hallelujah there are things that God has done for others for the sake of others. There are things that God does for the saints for the sake of Jesus. There are things that can happen to Mephibosheth because he's connected to the house of Saul. Please hear me believers, we're rounding up. I truly want your life to experience the reality of God's grace I want you to touch these mysteries to experience them in a way and a manner that makes you exceptionally fruitful remember the Lord told us at the beginning of this year that I will make you exceeding fruitful he said it he said it and I believed him it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness and now I show you the mystery of remembrance that a book can be opened 
you can call upon the God of heaven and say, Lord, remember, remember, remember. My father was a missionary. You can tell God he's gone to be with the Lord. But remember, he served you even at the point of death. Lord, this is not how you reward them that serve you. Suddenly the book is open. And God says, let me come and invest my favor upon this family for the sake of the sacrifice. It is not always about what you have done personally. You can take advantage of every good thing. Philemon chapter 1 and verse 6. That the communication of your faith might become effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ. You can take advantage of every good thing. Lord, I'm in the worship team. Come. I sing. I sing. I stand before your people and I sing. Lord, when apostle is preaching, I'm also standing. Sometimes I am tired, but I'm standing. Remember, oh God, your service. And the heavens open towards you. And God comes to you. Son, what should I do? And you say, oh God, bless me. Give me wisdom, give me favor. And he opens up your heavens. Do not waste your yesterday many of you made good use of it use it as a memorial let it rise to heaven speak to him concerning every matter don't forget what i taught you don't forget the scripture that i taught you that you stand before god and say remember concerning this issue remember you can confront him concerning any issue bring your strong reason lord let the plague of death end in this family why should the plague of death end lord even if everybody served idols i stand as a preach i stand as a priest i have called upon the name of the lord and adam knew his wife again and she bore seth and men began to call upon the name of the lord i stand as a preach in my family hallelujah let me give you one prayer point last prayer point and then we're done i like you to pray and say lord every good thing that should come into my life as declared by your word as declared by scripture i declare that on account of this remembrance i receive it by faith let it come huh? please lift your voice and pray i receive it by faith every good thing I taste it and every good thing. Ero Shabaka, every good thing. Paracataponsa, Emma Salakotari, Shekeropa, Shapataya, Ragapata, he that did not spare his son. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I decree and I declare over your life in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. I stand by the privilege of God's grace and I call upon our Father who is the God in heaven concerning you, concerning your family, concerning the issue of request. I agree with you. Let the book of remembrance be opened now. Let the book of remembrance be opened now. Let the book of remembrance that archives your faithfulness. Let the book of remembrance that archives your sacrifice. Let the book of remembrance that archives your consistency. Let the book of remembrance 
that records your diligence your unbendedness the service you have served in the house of god i stand before the god of all heavens and i declare let it be open now and i pray in jesus name that every ahasuerus that sustains the influence the wealth the intellectual prowess the access to lift you and take you from the gates of your destiny into the palace i command let there be no sleep for them tonight in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i place an anointing upon you and in the name of jesus karus kabaratushia by that anointing i declare that as you walk the length and breadth of your territory your city everyone anointed and ordained to remember you for good i compel that the anointing will cause them to do so i bring your ministry before the god of heaven let it be remembered tonight i bring your family before the god of heaven let them be remembered tonight i bring your education before the god of heaven i command remembrance tonight i bring your finances before the god of heaven i provoke remembrance tonight i bring your marriage before the god of heaven i provoke remembrance tonight i bring your business before the god of heaven i provoke remembrance tonight I bring your destiny before the God of heaven. I provoke remembrance tonight. I even bring your past before the throne of heaven. And I declare remembrance for the sake of mercy. That every dimension like Joseph that you would have entered and has been delayed for two years delayed for three years delayed for 25 years delayed for 60 years there are blessings god spoke to your grandparents it's been delayed for decades by the mystery of remembrance i bring you into that inheritance i bring you into that experience I'm praying that between now and the end of October as surely as the Lord lives let there be a sign in your life let there be a sign in your academics a sign in your ministry a sign in your family in the name of Jesus Christ the last prayer for you everything you have lost please believe the prayer whether it is money you have lost relationships you have lost assets you have lost any kind of thing your spiritual life your fire i stand by the god of heaven and i decree and declare on account of the book of remembrance being opened i provoke sudden restoration sudden restoration by the power of the holy ghost sudden restoration listen and i not only pray for you i pray for everyone connected to you connected to you by blood connected to you spiritually let the extension of this mystery of remembrance reach them thank you jesus thank you jesus let me challenge you before i do the altar call please listen i'd like you to use this weekend into next week as god grants you grace please put this that i teach you to work don't just get excited for nothing. 
Many of you need to go back to God on behalf of your family. Do business with God. I'd like you to put your destiny in front of you and negotiate your way into dimensions of power, dimensions of grace. Remember, oh God, sing before him, dance before him, do it as a couple, do it as brothers and sisters, do it as fellow church members, fellowship members, stand before God with understanding and watch the wonder-working power of the mysteries of the kingdom. Lord, we give you all the praise. Let the name of the Lord be praised. Lord, may we have many testimonies from tonight's encounter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone.